don't know if that was the activation <laughs> code or why. <laughs> I didn't know if you were serious. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, welcome. I uh, want to thank HCAMP for the use of their studios and for uh, broadcasting for people who can't sleep on uh, sat Sunday mornings uh, can watch. But it, it does serve a, a good purpose of uh, when there are items of interest to the community that, that people watch it. Uh, we have two public hearings today, and interspersed, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the, if you missed the last meeting, which just about everybody did, talk a little bit about uh, some of the procedural changes that we're doing uh, to open things up a little more. So the first item on the agenda is the public hearing for Air Street, the Scenic Road Permit. And there is a uh, procedural change, I think might be the right word. I'm gonna ask Jennifer to explain it. So one of the things we're implementing is at the beginning of the public hearings is Jennifer is going to explain uh, kind of the basics of what the person is, uh, what the situation is and what an entity or a person or a developer can do without coming to us for approval and talk about that aspect of it. And then after the petitioner uh, discusses the procedure, she'll then talk about how what they said um, uh, impacts the project and what approvals we have to give. So what we're doing is we're defining the scope of what we have responsibility for and letting everybody know that in some cases, even if we take no action, the petitioner can still do something to the property. So it's kind of part of the general education process. So define the term, so to speak. Jennifer? Thank you. <clears throat> So um, in this instance, the town of Hawkington has filed a per, an application for a scenic road permit to remove two trees and a portion of the stone wall on Ash Street, which is a scenic road. Um, the reason for the request is to uh, allow for a driveway into um, what they're hoping to construct as a parking lot for the uh, public space, public open space um, access there. Um, they are only seeking permission for the scenic road portion of the project. The project itself does not trigger any additional permits from this board, does not trigger site plan review or anything else. We're not here to, re the board is not here to review those aspects of the project, just the removal of two trees <coughs> and a portion of the stone wall. Typically, um, if the trees are in the public, uh, under the public shade tree law, Vax General Law Chapter 87, we would also be holding a joint hearing with the tree warden. However, um, if objections are filed to the removal of those trees prior to the hearing or during the hearing, then that portion of the public hearing does not happen now, and then that goes straight to the Board of Selectmen. So the board has received three objections to the removal of the trees. So the public shade tree law hearing piece will be held by the Board of Selectmen at a later date. So you are strictly looking at the scenic road portion of removing the two trees and the portion of stone wall. Okay. So as related <coughs> to the stone wall, our what we vote here determines the stone wall. And two and the removal. Well, no, of just I'm breaking it to two. Yes. So. But it's step one of two for the trees. Correct, and what we've done in the past when this has happened, and what I would recommend for the board to consider, is that we issue a condition on the trees that no work be done until the applicable provisions of the public shade tree law be complied with, which means they would have to then go to the Board of Selectmen. Okay, thank you. So, presenting for the town. Oh, see. I move to open the public open hearing. hearing. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Excuse me. Lance Mr. Director of Land Use and Town Operations. Uh, the Conservation Commission is actually the owner or manager of the property along with the Sudbury Valley trustees, but CONCOM is meeting at the same time you are, so they're not able to be present. 
Um, so I'm here to answer any questions. And uh, with me is Phil Paradis of Beta Group, who um, <coughs> uh, has designed the project on behalf of the town. I think he's adjusting the volume. Thank you. You're so thank you, uh, Commission. Uh, as Elaine said, my name is Phil Paradis. I'm a professional engineer with Beta Group. We've been asked to uh, design a uh, gravel parking lot for uh, use by the town uh, public, public parking lot to um, better use the uh, open space. Uh, and today, um, in order to get access to the, the parking lot, we have to uh, we have to remove a section of, of, of wall, do some regrading, uh, remove two, two trees, a 36 inch ash tree here and a three inch hickory here uh, to do some grading. Um, and then we're gonna, once with the grading is done, we're gonna reconstruct the walls to, to the edge of the uh, um, driveway on both sides. Um, and that's the project. We, I have pictures here of the of the um, I have pictures here of the tree. The tree is the 36 inch tree is right here. Okay. The uh, the little you can't see the little hickory behind it. Um, Looking straight on. So it's straight right here, Phil, right? Yes. Okay. The big, yeah. And this so one? The second one, right of the sign. Okay. Okay. We also put on the plans a tree that is to the right and it, that's dead. Um, you can see that. And then it's this, the this tree. Is, this is the other way. This is the tree and this is the dead, the dead one. Right? This dead one? Yep. Okay. So the, also, the tree warden was unable to attend tonight. Um, he had a personal matter to attend to, but he did provide comments to the board. Um, Sorry, who was that? I didn't just, the tree warden was unable to attend tonight, but he did provide comments to the board that the large oak does have fungi associated with rot on the side that's facing away from the road. Um, he says that this would make it unstable and dangerous in the near future, so he does not have an objection to its removal. The three-inch diameter hickory is off of is of little consequence and in the wrong place at the wrong time. So I have no problem with that removal, also. And and just so you know, we uh, this this project went before conservation a couple weeks ago, and they uh, encouraged us to look at uh, trying to save the the big tree, um, and also reducing the width of the driveway. Uh, we had shown, uh, w when we submitted this, a 16-foot wide driveway. Um, so we did look at trying to, redu trying to reduce the driveway to save the tree, but the, the, the canopy of the tree is fairly significant. And we would be cutting probably 40% of the roots on the, on the um, north side of it. The, um, the, second, the second issue is because of the way that the grading is, if you go out to the site, you'll look, as soon as it goes from the road, it goes straight up to a wall. The wall's up, kind of at the top of a hill. So we have to cut in to the hill. So that tree would be higher and, and the, the banking would be higher, uh, really restricting um, site distance. Uh, the ability to see people coming up Ash Street uh, from from the left as you're coming out, making it very dangerous. So, and we don't, you know, if, if it was a healthy tree, it would just keep growing and getting bigger and making it worse. So, so I, in order for us to do this project, we really need to take that tree down. There's also, like I said, a, a, although it's not required to, to put this driveway in, there's, there's another tree that's dead, you know, 15 feet to the right. Captain. Questions from the board? Um, right. Through the chair, uh, twofold question. First, how do people access this open space currently? Number one, if they do it all, if they can at all. And secondly, are there any options that were considered by the town to create a parking lot, for lack of a better term? 
So it's an 81-acre parcel, and it, there are two um, places where it comes out to Ash Street. One is further up near 97, where there's a sign, and you can pull off the road there. You can maybe get one or two vehicles there, um, just pulling off the road. Uh, the town only has a 15-foot wide strip there, and so that's all it has at that location. So that was our first choice. We initially <coughs> made that gravel area so that you could pull off the road when the town bought the property. Just a point of context, um, I don't mean to interject with the chair, but uh, that is the Elmwood Farm parking space, uh, it's a parking lot, which is like three cars. And um, that the, whole, the whole parcel reaches around behind the whole entire neighborhood. So, um, there is some parking in one location, but the location we're talking about is is south of there. Right, and after we put in those those that small gravel area, the DPW uncovered a catch basin right in front of it, and when they opened that up, it created kind of a they put in a berm, and so you have to drive up over a curb now to to get off the road, and it's kind of getting overgrown. So we're looking for a place where more people can access a quite sizable parcel, and there's a fair number of trails in there as well. <coughs> What, if any questions? Uh, that was another comment about that lot. Um, <coughs> my Cub Scout pack, we cleared that area and um, it's quite overgrown four or five years ago. It probably needs regular maintenance more like we did a major job on it. Um, and the Conservation Commission and the town got the grant from the state and we got the sign and we put that up and everything. Um, but we, there wasn't much money otherwise uh, for parking other than the, the gravel at that location. Um, the southern location is, um, we're reading some of this email that we just got on our desk today. Uh, there's other options and other options that have asked for, but I'm not sure what the answers are. Um, and I've gotten calls from people on Ash Street that are curious, that want to have a, a, a more cost-effective solution, and they're asking questions that uh, I guess maybe you've already answered some to Joe Markey. Um, so I would like to hear more information about what we've told the neighborhood um, and what else we can do. And, and about the current letter that we have here about arena farm parking. Um, so however, whatever order we can talk about that, I'd be interested in hearing those details. Well, I think we're here to talk about what the town is looking to do. Um, if there's a private landowner that wants to allow people to park at their business, they could do that, but that could go away at any time. And a and person would have to then walk down Ash Street to access the trails. There's no sidewalk on that section. Is, is there no access from the, the property that was, that was uh, indicated as, a, as an option? There's no access to the, um, the open space? I think if you're talking about arenas, yeah. you'd have to walk behind the business some distance. I don't know if there's trails okay. there. I, I don't know how one would access them. Okay. Well, good thing is we have a lot of scouts in town looking to make trails and projects like this. Um, and, and forgive me, we just got this um, to be known right now, but it looks like there's been some discussions that seem reasonable. Um, who would who would be in charge of that? Would the town or the not sure. commission? I'm not sure what you're referring to. Uh, alternative ideas of what you're presenting. Well, the Conservation Commission is the entity that is seeking to access this conservation land, so those options would be brought to the CONCOM. So and to Sudbury Valley Trustees who has the conservation. So, so when I was on the Conservation Commission, when we did the Elmwood Farm entrance, uh, we got the permission from the Conservation Commission for the scouts to do the work. Um, and uh, Don Gams provided us a sign, and we put it up there. And, uh, and since then, the DPW has come by and made it a little bit diff more difficult to park because of the nature of the, of the stormwater. Um, what I'm hearing on this side, south of Ash Street, uh, is a lot more engineering needed to create space uh, instead of working with what we have already in place. Uh, and the questions I'm hearing from Mr. Markey and some Ash Street people are, why can't we do an entrance that doesn't cost a lot of money? Don't cut down a big tree, <laughs> uh, and I just like to, you know, what what answers do we tell Mr. Markey on all the questions that we, we know that he asked? 
I think many of the, some of the items on here are within CONCOM's jurisdiction. So I think some of it defer. My question is, what is the frontage on ash of the property at that point? Because then it goes back and around. So what's the, the, the actual frontage of the property? 50 feet. So it only has a 50 foot frontage right, right. where it accesses. We, we, worked, we, we worked with the Conservation Commission as well as uh, others to try to figure out how many parking spaces we wanted to put in. We had, we had three different options for uh, five, 10, and 15 space parking. Some of it extended all the way behind, behind the, it's about 200 feet from the road. Um, so we felt to be more sensitive to the neighbors that we pulled it as close, close to the Ash Street as we could get it. And we reduced the number of size, the size, you know, it could always be expanded in the future if, if there was a, a, a demand for it. Um, but we, we reduced the size to really what's minimal you know, uh, to, to get some parking there. And I know we don't have the tree warden here. Any indication on that tree when we talk about the condition? Is it something that has to come down in a year or two years or something that if, let's just, if left course, we're talking about 10, 15, do we know that at all? Try 50. Okay. Try 50, that's about right. I can only go with what his comments were, which was that it would make it unstable and dangerous in the near future. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Well, we don't bonus. know what that is. Oh. I wish he was here because that. Bonus. Okay, let's, well, we're going to open it up to the public in a in a minute. So, so if you want me just to respond to Frank's yes. question. So um, I wrote back to Mr. Markey back on Thursday, June 15th. Um, I said the planning board is reviewing the project solely under the scenic road bylaw and the criteria set forth under section 160-6 of the general bylaws. No site plan is required because there are less than five spaces being constructed. The planning board is not the owner manager of the property or the CR holder and made no decisions regarding the project design. Conservation is the manager on behalf of the Town of Hoddington and SVT is the CR holder. Regarding funding, I believe the project is funded by a town meeting article specific to this property and the money would not be able to be spent elsewhere. Also, it is not the planning board's charge to make a list of trailhead accesses and their priorities. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions from the board? Um, I just want to say that, um, you know, I was down there and looked at it. Um, it's, it's a big, huge tree and I have the same question that you pose. Um, and I wish the tree warden was here because I'd like to know, you know, what the what the likelihood of, of that tree living another 50 or 75 years is. Um, and uh, while we're not in the business of, you know, deciding what the alternatives are for people, part of the bylaw is to ensure that alternatives are looked at um, rather than taking down um, mature trees. Um, it's a beautiful spot. It's the quintessential scenic road. Vista, it, it absolutely is, and it looks, you know, it's a straight, big, gorgeous tree. Um, <clears throat> so I have, you know, I have some reservations about um, voting on this without the tree warden here to ask some of those questions. I think they're pertinent questions. Um, I understand that the money couldn't be spent uh, a different way, um, but it does seem to me that um, <clears throat> exploring other alternatives that might be less costly to the scenic road as well as potentially less cost costly to the taxpayer might be advantageous. So that's just my okay. early thoughts. Just a follow on question to that. What is the cost of the project? Once we're through with permitting, Beta will provide an estimate. Okay. No rough feel for it. Okay. My question, um, does adding four parking spots alter, is there any kind of restriction from a scenic road perspective to having four parking spots included in there, it's free and clear? No. Yeah, it's just the removal of the trees and stone wall that's affected by the that's scenic the road. Mm -hmm. Okay, no other questions from the board? Uh, okay. Just one, is <clears throat> the parking lot gonna be an impervious surface or like a gravel? It's, yeah, it's meant to be gravel right now. Okay. There will be, it, oh, oh, around the edges, there's gonna be a stone, uh, 
still on the shoulder, mm -hmm. uh, three feet deep to, to allow for infiltration of any, any runoff. Just the procedural question again. So the, uh, <coughs> the selectmen are going to actually decide on this, right? Correct? Because there's yeah. been an objection. Yeah, yeah, here's Sorry. Yeah, it's two different procedures. Okay. So one, uh, as it relates to the scenic road, I'm looking at Jennifer to correct me if I'm wrong. We have that voting authority. So basically, for the stone wall and the permission of the stone wall, that falls within our authority. And the removal of the two trees the under the scenic road. And if the removal of the two trees. But there is a second aspect to removal of the two trees that goes to the Board of Selectmen. So even if we vote yes, the it, it has to be conditioned on them receiving a positive vote on the by the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Okay. Question three, Mr. Chair. Yes. So, kind of where um, Joe Markey was going with this, I have a question to um, what What is the town's plans for future parking lots like this, and what do we currently have? I mean, just to get a feel for the overall where this fits in to the town plans. Plans for like trailside parking. We have. Um, a number of conservation areas throughout town with small parking areas. We have Whisper Way, College Rock, uh, uh, Hopkinson Highlands. There's various places around. You know, small, very small. So this kind of fits in. Yes. Fits in with that. Thank you. Okay. If no more questions from the board, let's open it up to the public. You, uh, which microphone should we be using? Uh, so. I guess the one at the table, I guess. You're going to have to come to the table and take one of the other mics. Okay. So who table. wants to uh, public comment? Name and address. Jeff. Jeff Doherty. I'm here as a uh, private citizen, but to give you a little bit of history, I worked on the Open Space Commission um, and CPC when this was being purchased by the town. It's a beautiful 80 plus acre um, preserve. Uh, I've walked the property, not the whole thing. Um, but I'm, I'm a little perplexed because when this came before us, I think Sudbury Valley trustees and the negotiators of purchasing this for the town got a raw deal. Because that 15 foot strip down by the old Abbott house should have been a larger area. That being said, there was another opening down by the um, gas line. Uh -huh. The former chairman of the board for the planning board and his neighbor bought the parcel that should have been used for this particular purpose. And that's a shame that that happened. Um, and I think that was just kind of, it was a, it was an article at town meeting. It shouldn't have happened because now here we are two years later trying to figure out how do we get into the parcel. And that, that's a nice flat area. You could have had parking there if you got permission from gas line or whoever it is. But when I went down and took a look at the, at the site this evening, that's such a steep slope on that side of the Ash Street. That's a viable tree. I challenge the tree warden in his assumption of a fungi. I'd like to know what that fungi is. I'm not an arborist, but I've been in the business for a long time. Um, yes, there's a tree to the side of it that's dead. As a matter of fact, I counted seven dead trees on my way down there that should be taken down before this tree should be taken down. It's approximately a 100 plus year old oak. And you guys know what a 100-year storm is. Well, um, I'm more in the opinion of the person that <coughs> said that that tree would stand 50 years. I'm saying it'll stand 100. So I'm in objection to this tree coming down. I'm in objection to uh, this area because I think the, the town got sold a bill of goods 
when this was originally planned, we got cheated out of a stupid 15 foot right away into this thing. And I think we should be negotiating with the homeowner next to that 15 foot strip to see if we can widen that and get into it because the jog that that thing takes is ridiculous. But there is also another opening down by the, the gas line that leads in closer to that parcel. That, to me, seems like it would be a better place to walk into that trail. Okay. Through the chair, can I have some context to his comment? Okay. Uh, <coughs> the entrance at the Abbott Farm is called the Elmwood Farm on the sign. Um, it's a parking for three or four cars, um, and uh, it's next to the gate for the Abbott Farm. Um, and then the property quickly goes down to maybe five or six feet as a path, and it's between the two property owners. And it's a, it was some sort of a agreement that was made with the state as well uh, in order for us to be able to use funds to buy this property. But it's really just, just a, from that parking lot on the north side of of what we're talking of the property and Ash Street at the farm. It's a windy five, six foot wide, ten foot wide area sometimes to the back lot. So it's not really <coughs> parking at the property, but it's parking on the trail or a future trail as more scouts work on it to make more trails. Uh, so Ms. Um, Jeff's point is that uh, the parking at the north, I believe, the parking at the north side at the Abbott Farm is for a trail leading to the property, really, and then there is no access directly to the property that could have been done at the gas line and what we're talking about now, or at the Reno Farms. I guess my other question would be is, how many people have approached the town saying, I'd like to access this property, I'd like to go walk the trails. Um, is, there, is there a real, big need, do we need to put in a four car? Now I know you say build it and they will come, but have we had people approach us and, and this really should be on the hot seat to say, we really need to do this. We've had you know, umpteen people ask us for access to the trail and they can't get there. Uh, is this through my experience from Concom and in the, other, the other parking location? Um, and I do believe that the three or four spaces are important to have. I understand that the Con Con Conservation Commission's thinking from our notes, going from 15 to 10 to five uh, to four makes sense. Um, at any given time, uh, there could be people informally <coughs> taking a trail, or there could be organized trail walks where there could be five, 10 cars. So uh, I think three or four spaces is, is a good amount. In, in line with the, all the things we've done and done. Thank you, Jeff. Based on where we are and based on your, you had a comment, does anyone else um, look at the, uh, from the board, are comfortable without having the tree warden here to ask questions, et cetera? or want other people here to ask questions. Are we comfortable that, based on the group we have here, that tonight we can make a decision? Through the chair. Um, I would suggest that we put it off until we have the warden, um, only based upon the fact that there are people that are proposing <coughs> this, and we need to give them the correct answer that we're looking for. So even if, even if the tree does have fungal or whatever that is. Let, let's hear it from the warden who has the fortitude to understand what's, what that is about. Then also I, I look at it as um, Jeff just said, uh, is that your name, Jeff? Mm -hmm. So as Jeff just said that the height of that um, is, is so high that you're gonna disturb a lot of other things coinciding there. Then on the third aspect of that is to his point was that we can't look at hindsight and say, where's that 20 foot passage to go into because that's gone. Mm -hmm. So now we don't want to point fingers at anybody or say anything bad about anybody. So I think if we put this off until the warden can, can bring his 
due diligence to it, and then we decide from that point. We're not making overstepping our commitment on how we move forward. Sorry, I would take the opposite approach. Um, I think we all see pictures of that tree, and I think it's a very subjective as far as how long that tree will be around and whether it's healthy or not. And I think that we should attack this problem while we're all here and we're all discussing it. I don't think that the input of the tree warden will make a huge difference, in my mind. Um, I'm halfway between both these guys. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, I agree with Cliff uh, a lot on this. I think that the tree warden should be here to answer questions and, and stand up for his decision. Uh, I, I don't think that tree should come down. And um, I think it's, it's, if it's easier for this project to bring the tree down, that doesn't make any sense to me. I think we should look at alternatives. And we have information here that there are alternatives, and I, I just look at this for the past 30 minutes. I'd like to have more information. Ed Harrell's on vacation, uh, tree warders are here, uh, Elaine's here, but we don't have the information on the alternatives, and it would be nice to have that information. I, I would concur with Frank, but a little bit a uh, twist on that is I'd like to hear from ConCom. I'd like uh -huh. to understand from them what other alternatives that they had looked at and why did they decide on this particular one as the only feasible solution? So I think between the tree war and the ComCom, I would defer to pushing this off until both parties can be present. Just to kind of echo what everyone's saying, a little different spin on it, but I like to believe, listen to the experts and uh, rely on expert opinion before we make a decision. Yeah, and right. Mr. Chair, I was just speaking to the tree ward, and I think the ConCab would have a, a lot more input into this. So let's, uh, I think the general feeling is we need more information, but let's take the opportunity for the people who are here tonight to be able to speak. So thank you. Oh. Before you begin, yes, open, open and, and continue okay. uh, your clock hearing. Uh, I'll move to open that. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Well, you have to finish what you were saying. I'll move, <laughs> I'll move to open the um, hearing, the development hearing between Whalen Road and Chamberlain. I don't know what it's taking. And then continue until, and then continue the, until the end of this hearing. Thank Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. My name is John Gelbler. Um, I live at 160 Ash Street, which is across the street from the name tree in the area that's going here. Uh, a lot of us who live in that neighborhood area feel very blindsided by all of this. And that it came out from nowhere. Uh, we were shown plans that we're going to put a long 200 foot drive back there that was going to park with many cars. Uh, there's no such thing like that in Hopkinton at all, going between houses and disturbing a neighborhood that way. Uh, then all of a sudden it reduced to four cars where no approval supposedly is required to do this. Uh, so you have to look at how we feel about this. In addition to that, it's been pointed out the steepness of that road there and the curve there. Having lived there for over 15 years, we've watched numerous cars wrecked there, which I've never lived in a neighborhood in my life where a car has rolled, a car has taken out our telephone poles, taken out our mailboxes, hit our rock wall. Uh, so we consider that a, a dangerous area there and, and is an area where pulling cars in and out, even our driveways, is sometimes can be challenging and what's going to happen when it snows and rains there. And, uh, that road there is already in bad condition, part of the road being built on top of the spring uh, lower down by the, by the farm. The other thing too is that uh, we have many wonderful trails in our town. We, we like them. Um, some of them are not well signed at all, so you don't know where they are. The uh, vast majority of them do not have parking lots at all. And vast those places that do not have parking lots also do not have sidewalks. So people are either expected to walk there, ride their bikes there, or park their cars by there. There's nothing to prevent you from parking on the street, uh, whether you're in the south location or the upper location there. Uh, it would seem to me that you could grade areas there to make a wider parking area for the street for people to park who wanted to be there. Um, you know, there's, I think there's other alternatives here. They're not gonna cost a great deal of money. Um, you know, the city has a, a small building on the arena farm right there. Um, I think exploring the option of renting property from her and putting in four or five car parking spot there in a place that's already there, already existing there, would make rational sense And asking someone about that. Uh, the part about the pipeline through there, which is a great big, huge open spot right now. I, I know that in this state, sometimes those things are challenging, um, but it doesn't hurt to try. And, and give that where it's gonna be the least disruptive to people and, and create a place that's there. It's already existing. It's not going to, 
take out beautiful trees. It's not going to do grading. It's not going to carve out hills. It's going to be a part of the street that's flatter and more amenable to doing these kinds of things there. Um, so I think there are a lot of options that are available for us here. Um, we looked at in our town that trying to create a plan that allows a lot of trails and things to be interconnected or a way that you could get to them would, would be a wonderful thing to have uh, for our community and our population and, and what that was for people to have a healthy green lifestyle. So we definitely we support that. We'd like to see our tax money. Uh, we look at this property being hot and I think we were like many that Jack was mentioning that we had an assumption of what was going to happen with the house that was bought and that didn't happen. And we all kind of questioned like what did happen and when you learn about it, uh, I agree we don't want to talk about spilled milk and water under the bridge, but the reality is that something happened that shouldn't have happened uh, with our tax money. And we'd like to see the property be used in a way that it was meant to be used. So I think a full exploration of options what's all around that property. If you look behind, it's full of wetlands. You know, is there ways to put boardwalks? Are there, are there just options there that would make something that would be very pleasant for our community? So, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. You want to come up and to the microphone? My name is Ken West, 162 Ash Street. Uh, a few things. I was one of a few people that got Ash Street and Front Street declared a scenic road way back when. So I'm very familiar with what's going on with the Scenic Road Act. Uh, that ash tree is not dying. It's not going to die. And according to, I, I just don't understand where he's, this fungus is going to kill that tree in the near future. That's a bunch of bunk. The, uh, and the tree warden, according to the Seed Road Act, he has to hold, he has to be at this hearing. He has to be here according to the Seed Road Act. And if I can question, is that? That's the, you read the Seed Road, I got the Seed Warden, I got yeah. it here, if you'd like to read it. Yeah. He's supposed to be here for that, for this yeah. hearing. Well, what we are going to do is invite him back. Well, I just, I just you know, I'm just yeah. bringing up some things here. Uh, we have enough trouble with our trees in all over town here, especially ash, I mean uh, oak trees, with the gypsy moths. We're losing trees, we're gonna lose them left and right. If a tree goes three years defoliated by the gypsy moths, it is bound to die. And we're losing them. We can't afford to lose big trees like that, big shade trees. I've, I've done a lot our neighbors have done a lot to try and protect the trees in our area from the gypsy moss. I, I, I caught them and I go after their eggs and everything. But if we don't do that, if you look at 85 going into Milford, it looks like a disaster area. If you look at, look at uh, over on Saddle Hill, it's a disaster area. The whole town has become a disaster area with the gypsy moss. And I realize that they go through a cycle but while they're going through that cycle, we're going to lose a lot of big trees. We lost trees at the corner of Ash and Front Street already. Big ash trees on there in the last big outbreak of the gypsy moss. We lost four big ash trees down there. We can't afford to lose anymore. Is this tree, where he come up with this fungus is killing this tree? I don't know. That same well, fungus I, I, is all over. <laughs> all the trees have that same, it's a, it's, it's nothing more than a than a uh, moss that's on the trees, and it's not killing the trees. Another point I want to make: the town has access to that property now on a nice flat area. The if you look at the you know, you have to get the the layout of the property, but the town has three lots back in behind that are belong to the water department that have access to the road right there. There's plenty of access back there. You can put a roadway through the water department's land. You're not going not to hurt their water. You know, so there's a lot of things that can be done that doesn't have to take down this huge tree and, and the, the neighbors are going to have big, I know we're not, we're just dealing with scenic roads, but they're not, the neighbors are going to have big problems with runoff. 
I'm going to have trouble with runoff coming down that driveway, down into my my uh, st uh, driveway. I just, I just, you know, we really need to think about this a lot before just going and mamby pamby doing this stuff. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate Thank it. Mr. You. Chair, through you, Mr. Chair, before somebody comes up, else comes up, can we maybe ask the, the uh, applicants to respond to that suggestion of the water department access? I'd be curious to know. If, if that's an option, what the gentleman was mentioning, the water department has access. Yeah, I think we there's, a, there's a large corridor of um, land that goes parallel to Ash Street that the town has picked up from various subdivisions over the years between it's the not, stone, that's not what I was talking about. stone talking crossing. About behind off of right. the, the behind there. Right, so some of that went to the water department. So behind stone crossing and other areas, so there's some landlocked parcels back there that you can access. Uh, through a detention pond area, I think, off Stone Crossing. But we'd have to look at some, some maps to, to see, but it's quite wet back there as well. Okay. Through the you. chair, yes. may I make a suggestion? Yes. That we, um, we, we know that there's opposition to this. Right. And we know that um, we, we need to ask you know, the experts right. on this. Um, why don't we table this until another meeting? Yeah, no, I think the idea is we are going to continue it to the other meeting, but I want to give opportunity if somebody is here and showed up because they may not be available to come to the next meeting. So I want to give you know, members of the public who are here or who are unsure if they can make it to the next meeting the opportunity to speak. Looks like we might be able to satisfy both of those <laughs> <laughs> requests. Well, thank you. So um, we're not going to take action tonight. We'll continue the public hearing. We need a vote to continue the public hearing to uh, your next meeting is July 24th. Um, I would recommend 8.15. Okay. So moved. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, if the tree warden and someone from CONCOM is not available to attend that meeting, you will, what, continue it again? We will continue it again. Yes. So you would like a representative from CONCOM Con -com. and the tree warden Correct. to be available? Thank you. Mr. Chair, um, I know we shouldn't be tasking other groups, but um, can we ask that this be maybe explained beforehand? Um, I'm referring to this uh, right on parking possibility. Well, I think that's uh, the, the, the group that's responsible is CONCOM. So I think when CONCOM comes, then we ask CONCOM about it. And, and if we need more, more, if we need more work, then they, they, they can do it. Thank Point you. of order. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Well, well no, if no, I may. No, we already moved to continue. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> so, so to that point, I mean, we've gotten a lot of good suggestions from other, you know, um, the public with regards to looking into more um, viable situations okay. that would be less invasive. So I think that those things also need to be looked at as we proceed forward as well. So if there's any way that we can make note of that and, and take those into consideration before CONCOM even comes, I don't know if that's a doable, but. That's CONCOM. ComCom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They have to do that. So I'm just throwing yeah. that, that, we're throwing, slapping and that I up against the wall. that they have taken some action already, but we don't know what they've done and what they have not done, and that's the purpose for them coming for the next. Gotcha. Just, just a point of order. Has anybody looked into this? Is that was purchased by the Conservation Commission and not by the Recreation Department. Now, we're talking about using it for recreational meat things, not conservation. So it was purchased. Is the, I believe it was purchased with Community Preservation Act funding under the open space section, which does allow for passive recreation, which trails are considered passive recreation. If you, if you read the, the deed, it is to the Conservation Commission. Right, so okay. it's to the it, town. It, I just wanted to bring that up. Okay, I didn't answer the so, question. Uh, excuse, I, I mean, me, excuse me, when, when someone else is talking, can we just have the floor sure. for that? Thank sure. you very much. Okay. So, Wait, excuse me, Amy. So, oh, okay. Sorry, I, just, I may have misheard, but we're, our meeting is August uh, 14th, not 15th, right? Did we say the right date? 
July. 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 Okay, July. but we continued this till July 24th. Oh, I thought at 8:15. At 8:15 p.m. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, just, just, can we have that one more time from you about what that? So the land was purchased by the inhabitants of the town of Hockington, and then the board of selectmen named the conservation commission the managers of the property. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we open up the, reopen up the hearing, um, why don't we take a five minute break, bring the other parties in, and <coughs> There's a tree calculator. That tree generates $230 of value every year. Yeah, and I think the key on fungus, I think that's what you're saying. And I'm not saying I agree with this, because I don't know, is that fungus is a sign of it being decayed as opposed to fungus decay. Who's talking about it? Oh, absolutely. Of course. Similar situation. I think it would be considered So, yeah, you only Okay. Unless it, but this would be ancillary to what. You know, it's not a change in the this is a change in attractive. So, what are the more, what, what, are, what are other biologies to get involved? should look at Makes sense. It shows you want to get turns. Especially when people get upset about that. Right, right. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. Priority children, animals, trees. Depending on what you got. Maybe trees could be higher than children. I said, I'm opening up a tree house in North Carolina. Oh, no, I need the trees. Don't diss the tree. People are passionate about the trees. They are. They are. They are. They are. They are. Right. Well, I'm sure you're making money out of it. Well, that's part of it. I'm in That's part of it. Really? Is that on your body? That's on my body. Wow. I'm a tree of it. Yeah. That's legit. How long did that take to get? It's the other way around. 70 hours. The tree is hugging you. 170 hours. You have no idea. This goes all the way down to here on most of the whole place. Wow. I like the passion. So, no joke. I think trees might be higher than that. Yeah. I'm doing the agenda. I think I'm going to be. Are you back? Yeah. I'm sure you always wanted a tattoo. I can never think of what I want. The boat, which I'm happy about. Uh, the same here. Same here. Hot and free. Is there a water for me? A water uh, fountain? Um, actually, there's a dispenser, isn't there? Yeah, I checked it's, the last uh, time. It's a bubble alarm. The bubble really? wasn't working upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got one over there. Very hard to film things. Do we have, uh, we have time for you to grab a phone? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm listening to it all, but you know, I'm not listening to it. Yes, but I, when I reach my comfort point, look out.
smaller group, I didn't realize there were so many in the hall. Because <laughs> I'm Teresa. Okay, let's. Uh, you go around the loop. Give me a cup of water. Head on there. That's like a road. Future. Does it go to the school department or something? Else? I don't know if you want to land or anything. But okay. I don't know. Uh, I think it's not we will open. Uh, we continued and we will open the. We uh, need a vote to open the public hearing. Yeah, we already voted to open it. Open it. You're just going to vote to reopen it. We're going to vote. Get a motion to reopen the public hearing. Um, I motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, before we oh, before we start uh, the specifics, uh, since we didn't have a lot of people at the last meeting, we're trying to implement here. We're implementing some changes, procedural changes, and one of the procedural changes is for projects. We have volunteers who are will be the project liaison for the project. So Muriel has agreed to be the project liaison. So this is someone who is going to get more involved. Doesn't mean the whole board is going to have to know what's going on and do the same amount of work. But we'll do extra work and we'll actually handle part of the outline for the hearing. Uh, the second thing we're, we're doing and we're implementing is as with many of the boards in town, we haven't historically been as much of an adherent to all the, the periods and crossing the T's, dotting the I's for uh, uh, open public hearing. So one of the things that we're implementing is we're asking if you have any comments, et cetera, whether it's the applicant or the public, that it's either brought up here at a public hearing, so we all hear it and can make the decision, or it's made through the principal planner, Jennifer, so it can be distributed to everybody. Because one of the key things with open meetings is that everybody sitting up here has the same information and is voting with the same information. And regretfully, we're human, and if somebody has a discussion with one and another, it doesn't necessarily either get conveyed to everybody or get conveyed to everybody exactly the way the person wanted to bring up. So uh, what we want to make sure is everybody has a fair, uh, as we continue forward this year, uh, it's fair, it's open, it's very public. Um, and if um, you
you make a phone call to one of us, we might listen politely and say thank you uh, and then refer you to Jennifer. So please don't be insulted that it's not that we're not interested, but we want to make sure we adhere to uh, what's necessary to have a fair hearing for, for everybody. Um, so we've talked about that at the last meeting. One of the other ones, and I don't even know, Paul, if you're aware of it, so just as a uh, FYI, um, I am very involved with Milford Regional Medical Center, including being on the building committee amongst four of the five other things I'm involved with. And Paul submitted a proposal for a building from Milford Regional that I would normally, as part of the building committee, be involved with. When I found out that the applicant had made that submission, I stepped back from my role in the building committee and said I want no involvement, don't discuss it with me, don't talk to me, and also filed with the town clerk that that was a potential. So just so everybody knows that even though I would have no personal interest in it based on my volunteering at Milford, I may have, if I hadn't stepped back, I would have been involved with you know, a discussion. And I don't know, Paul, if you were even aware if that was the case. I was aware. Okay. Um, so that is uh, the procedural uh, issues. And uh, why don't we start with, well, I'm gonna, before we start to, Jennifer, do you wanna give the basic kickoff? And this is the other thing I had discussed before, which is the, the general intro. So tonight the applicant has applied for an open space landscape preservation development <coughs> special permit and a flexible community development special <coughs> permit for 32 lot subdivision. Um, I would just note that um, I did a typo on the agenda and it says 34 lots and it's actually 32 lots. That was my fault. Um, so when talking to the chair prior to the meeting, he just wanted me to give sort of a brief what you're looking at tonight and what the goal of this application is and then where do we go from here so <clears throat> tonight so this process is a two-step process tonight is applied for a special permit for the use for the open space landscape preservation development use um, if it's approved there'll be a maximum number of lots under which he can then apply for a definitive subdivision and at that time all the design logistics and negotiations of you know different things will happen at that time there'll be full engineered plans there'll be all kinds of stuff at this stage it's conceptual it's you know is this a potential for development is this the kind of development we want to see in this this area so that's where we should focus the discussion tonight um, the chairman had also asked that I give you what he could do by right there. Um, that was a little bit tricky <laughs> for me to figure out. Um, and we're going to do this for every application, <laughs> yeah. so it's not just for this one. Um, I as we go forward this I year. believe he could get approximately three lots with an A&R plan on Chamberlain Street, but would need to build out the street because it's privately and it's a private street and it's unbuilt unbuilt at that point and then I believe it's approximately one lot off of Wayland that he could get with an A&R um, from my calculations. Um, Isn't that good? Four houses? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's kind of where we're at at this point. I don't know if there's any other anything else you want me to address at the, the beginning stage. So. And, and just two other things don't forget there's a conservation commission uh, impact on this so just everybody remember that and if during to help Muriel out if during the discussion um, we go just realize as Jennifer said there's a limited scope of what we're doing tonight the whole project if it goes forward beyond the, the next steps then comes up to a full project review and at that time, the typical comments, questions uh, that would come up from reviewing a project would then be open. So we have a limited scope tonight. And even though if you want to comment on some of the items that wouldn't be in the scope, I suggest you hold off on it because we all have bad memories. 
and we want to make sure at the appropriate time you ask your questions and bring up any issues. Uh, so at the public hearing, that is sort of the continuation, the next step, it's brought up at that time. So if Muriel tries to shorten your time a little bit and makes a comment, realize <laughs> what she's doing is trying to nicely say you're going a little off scope, this is for the next step, and bring it up at that time because we want to make sure at the next step all the issues that you do have are brought up. And this relates to any project um, and are, are brought up at that time. And through you, Ms. Kramer, I just had a, I guess I should be going through her now, or I don't know. That's my first question, but the, the second question is just a clarity about the permits. Is there two permits that are applied oh, yeah, for? So the, I'm sorry, the flexible community development permit is um, any project that proposes 10 or more building lots requires that they provide an affordable housing unit for okay. every 10 lots they have asked that they um, do a payment in lieu of, which is allowed under the bylaw, but it's at the discretion of the planning board. So when the time comes that the board's reviewing that special permit, you make that decision whether or not you want them to actually construct the affordable units or make a payment in lieu of. Great, thank you. Uh, so I have two questions, actually. One about that. Um, in the, um, in the uh, application it says a home so three units or the value of such units shall be allocated affordable pursuant to blah 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 um, the applicant proposes to contribute funds in the amount equal to the purchase price of a three-bedroom home so it would be three three-bedroom homes if right. it was okay I just make if sure. they're if you, they get a approval for 30 right more okay or more I, just want, I just want to make sure okay um, and I crossed my fingers so I would remember one other thing and I almost forgot it um, <laughs> Uh, I wanted to enter a uh, procedural question for all so I spent some time today going back over everything that had been submitted previously um, and I just wonder how we capture that if it's the board's pleasure to not make everybody resend in their input can we sure go so to this is a new filing it's a completely new application the record is completely clean of all that information the board at its discretion can opt to incorporate um, that information into the record um, because I don't have a lot of it with me tonight um, you could make that decision and then at our uh, next hearing if it's continued we would you know read a lot of that into the record and do a lot of the stuff we did last time um, that would include information from Concom, butters letters those kinds of things so um, none of that has been included as part of this record. I know I did include the link to the abutters letters in your packet, more as informational, not as part of the record. So we would have to read it all? Into well, we didn't read the abutters letters into the record last time. They were just noted as received. Um, so we could do that again. But the CONCOM stuff was all read into the record, I believe, or entered into the record. Entered into the record. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does anybody want to discuss that at the very beginning? I would like to make a suggestion because I did read a lot of the abutters um, comments and I think that, that if we are going to, to do anything that that be incorporated as well um, because there are so many. I'd actually like to agree with Cliff. I, uh, I read all the letters too and there's quite a bit of information out there that you know that the public wants us to know about and I would really like to include that so that they don't have to resubmit it. So do we have to vote to do that, Jennifer? I would, just to be okay. have a clean record. So is somebody willing to make a motion to that effect? I'll so move. A second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? OK. So that's so, everything from the previous hearing? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, Can the chairman make a motion? Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, so welcome, and you, you guys are our first up. We have a little bit of procedural first things, but um, welcome. I'm glad to have you here, and uh, uh, take it away. Okay, great, thanks. I'll start. Is this on? Yeah, it's mostly for the TV, I okay. think. Okay. Turn it a little bit towards you. Okay, there we go. <laughs> but make sure people can hear you. It's a little, it's a little challenging. Okay. Kathy Sherry from REC Hopkington. I'm here tonight with Paul Mastriani, the property owner and applicant as well as members of our project team. Um, I have attorney Joseph Antonellis here with me. And also we have behind me, I'm better with Zoom. Yes, <laughs> um, Michael Dryden from Bowler Engineering. He's our landscape architect. Scott Goddard from Goddard Consulting, our wetland specialist. 
Uh, Robert Michaud from MDM Transportation Consultants, they were responsible for the traffic study. So we have everyone here should questions come up. So as identified, we were before the prior planning board seeking a special permit for an open space landscape preservation development for a 34 lot residential subdivision to be located between Wayland Road and Chamberlain. We withdrew that application given the change to the planning board and no longer having um, six members that were able to vote on the special permit. Having spent several months going through multiple meetings with the planning board, conservation, as well as undergoing peer review by beta and listening to the concerns raised by the neighbors, we incorporated the many comments as well as some prior direction received through those meetings and refiled with the updated plan that we have in front of you tonight. So we're now here seeking a special permit for an open space plan for a proposed 32 lot residential subdivision to be located on the 83 acres between Wayland and Chamberlain. So just as a recap, the land is currently undeveloped. There's just over 16 acres of wetlands throughout the 83 acre parcel. It includes intermittent streams and a potential vernal pool. If you're looking at sheet one of, I'm sorry, sheet two of the site plan packet, We'll reference that. So the land is accessible from Wayland Road as well as Chamberlain Street. It also abuts town-owned land, including the high school and Berry Acres. The site is located within the agricultural zone. And I'll just point out that the portion of land on the lower kind of right-hand corner of the plan that zoned Office Park, it's about 18 acres is not included in the proposed development area due to the zoning restrictions, but as we'll discuss later or point out, we are proposing to designate this land as additional open space. Okay. So we've submitted for review a concept plan for a subdivision that we believe fully meets the special permit criteria. If you don't mind, could you flip to the um, sheet? Down on the bottom. On the bottom, right hand bottom. The graphics go slower though. So determine to determine the number of lots allowable on the open space plan, we did develop a conventional subdivision plan as shown on on sheet three. So with our yield plan, we have 32 lots serviced by approximately 4,400 feet of a new through road connecting Wayland and Chamberlain. There are two wetland crossings on this, on this plan, one over by Wayland, right at the end of the bulb, and then another wetland crossing that actually you could call connects Wayland and Chamberlain about halfway through the plan. As far as this plan goes, all the area, the frontage, and the setbacks meet the minimum requirements defined by the subdivision regulations. This plan has 200 feet of frontage or more on every lot. The lots are about an acre and a half or larger. All the front, side, and rear yard setbacks are minimums or better on every lot. We do have one common driveway over at lot one and two that's servicing those two lots. So this was our basic yield plan to determine um, the number of lots, the upper threshold of what would be allowed on the open space plan. If we jump to the open space plan, which is sheet six. Two, two comments on each page, or? We're gonna let them do their We're presentation. Do the yeah. I'll do the brief focus. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So with the open space plan, again, sheet six of the packet, we're proposing to create smaller lots than the conventional subdivision and leaving about 52% of the parcel as undeveloped open space. So with this design, we have about thir we have 13 lots off coming off of Wayland Road, 19 lots coming off of Chamberlain, and we're proposing to extend Wayland and Chamberlain and provide a connection of these two roads through a 20-foot wide emergency access road that would be paved and up to standards. As we are providing this controlled functional connection and continuation within this no, new roadway, we believe this exempts the new road from being classified as a dead end and not subject to the 1,000 foot, 10 lot limitation defined within the special permit criteria. So we, still, we see this as a continuous straight through road, even though a portion of it is emergency access. This design also helps to address some of many of the concerns raised by the adjacent neighborhoods 
regarding the increased traffic if this new roadway was to become a cut through or straight through. So with this plan, we have 32 lots that are serviced by about 3,600 feet of new roadway. We do have one cul-de-sac on the plan that meets the requirements under the open space bylaw. That's about 200 feet in length. It's referred to as road B and it's servicing three lots. We also recognize that there would be, and it's not directly on this plan, but there's improvements and widening to about 500 feet of Chamberlain Street that would be required. So that would be from what's noted on the plan as the unimproved road. We're going up Chamberlain from there to about the point where Center Trail um, comes out onto Chamberlain. That would need to be um, widened and improved. From the open space plan perspective, the average lot size is about an acre. We'd be able to support four bedroom homes ranging in size from 3,000 up to 4,500 square feet with private septic and a proposed connection to town water. In regards to town water, we have submitted a request to DPW for town water. We've provided the estimated usage requirements based on these numbers. We haven't received any feedback to date. If the town water is available, we'll go with that. If it's not available, our site plan does support private wells on each lot. Um, excuse with this, me, excuse when did you, when did you uh, reach out for that? Um, I believe we submitted the application on June 7th. Okay. <coughs> and that went directly to John Westerly. Okay, go ahead, I'm sorry. No problem. Within this plan, again, our area frontage and setbacks all meet the minimum requirements defined by the bylaw. So we have 100 foot of frontage on every lot. Most of them have more than that. And all the front, side, and rear yard setbacks are minimums or better on every lot. We are requesting one waiver, and that's from providing the 100 foot perimeter buffer for the section of the development that borders the Chamberlain Street right away and town owned land. So that's the section of the development around lots 32, 31, 30, 29, that area. We don't believe that would present any abut or privacy issues because it is the roadway and then um, town owned land. <clears throat> From a conservation perspective, all the structures are outside the 100 foot buffer zone. We have no disturbance within the 50 foot buffer zone. We do have two wetland crossings. They're the same as shown or similar as shown on the conventional yield plan one at Wayland, and then one um, in the area of the emergency access. This plan actually requires slightly less wetland alteration than what's shown on the conventional yield plan. From an open space perspective, we have about 43 acres would be in, within the development parcel would be preserved as open space. Of the 43 acres, about 28 acres or over 64% are uplands. So that exceeds the 50% required by the bylaw. In addition to the open space provided under the special permit, we would also be designating the additional 18.6 acres of land zoned as office park as open space, of which the majority of that is uplands. So that would be a total of about 62 acres of open space that would be dedicated with this project. The open space plan with the way that we were able to carve it out and carve out the lots, it does preserve the intermittent streams, the potential vernal pool, as well as the associated wetlands and buffer zones. We've also carved out in, open, in the open space, there's an old stone foundation and well on the property, so we've carved around that so that became part of the open space and would be accessible. Um, the open space is adjacent to the town owned land, so including the high school and Barry Acres. <coughs> and there are existing trails running through the property, which we, our intent would be to relocate and extend the trail system through the open space and the public ways. And on this plan, we've you know, presented a concept on how that could be accomplished um, there. So that's the overall open space plan. The only other thing I'll note is Due to the concerns about the increased traffic associated with this new subdivision, we did, as I mentioned earlier, have MDM transportation consultants conduct a detailed traffic study for the concept plan. So that traffic study looked at the impact to the surrounding roadways and intersections if the new road, um, to the new development, as well as it looked at if the new road was a straight through or through street connection, it looked at what the impacts for that would be. So we did submit that traffic study with our application and as part of the concept plan to identify um, any potential issues or concerns up front. 
Overall, though, the traffic study did conclude that the trip generation for the development is expected to be modest. It's not expected to materially impact operating conditions at the surrounding intersections and such. And we can speak to more detail on that when we get to those topics. So, so that's a very high level overview of the plans and such. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, I'm gonna hold off on questions and I'm also gonna recommend a process. When we get to questions, we'll go around rather than have everybody shoot things out because you'll, you'll end up throwing me off my game. Um, uh, Jennifer, would you take us through uh, your comments, please? Sure, um, I didn't have a lot of additional comments at this time. Um, I'll just note that um, we did not um, receive any additional um, comments from town departments other than um, I had some verbal conversations with the fire department. Um, their concerns from the previous Middle still remain in effect. Um, they will be happy to know that water has been applied for. That was one of their concerns. Um, and they have some issues with the road layout. Um, and we can talk about that um, when we get to that aspect of the L line. Um, I think everything else is being addressed or addressed. I'm just looking real quick. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have at this time, um, unless, um, but I will reserve the right to make additional comments. <laughs> so if you would do me a favor and put a pin in the comment about the water too, because even if they don't approve uh, water, I know that there is interest in connecting water. Yes. So we talk about both things when the time is right, if, yep. if it has to be two different things. Sure. Okay, um, so at this point, I'll start with Kelly. Does anybody have any early? Well, uh, oh, we, oh, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I you, thought you were done. No, I am. Except we, are we, if we're going down the outline, we have consultant review next. Okay, I was going to ask for uh, general questions okay. from the board at this point. That's fine. Kelly, anything? Uh, at this point. Frank. I'll go last. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Not at this point. Right yeah. I'm good right now. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, through the liaison. It's, it shows that the trail is going to be relocated, but um, I, I don't see where it's going to be relo relocated to. If you see, I'm just going to stand up here. You know. Sure. So basically, the trail comes down this unapproved way now, and that would continue. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, if you see the dotted line and then you see the, um, the solid line, this is the relocated trail. So basically, instead of cutting through the new lots, we would go around into the open space, reconnect up here. This is where Center Trail is coming in. And then basically provide a new connection to the existing trail in the new open space <coughs> here. So you can see where the solid line or the trail, those are the ones that are the new ones to be yeah. relocated yeah. and created. So we've now yeah, created what we hope, at least yeah. within this concept plan, is a continuous trail throughout the property using the new open space and public roadways. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Cliff? No, I'm good. I do have a couple, um, and I don't know if these are in the detail part or the, this part, but... Jennifer's going to tell us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she's going to buzz her. She's going to actually wire the chair. <laughs> okay, so the Board of Health had um, so comments that they weren't sure if the lots were viable. They hadn't done perk tests. Right I'm happy to hear that they applied for town water, but do we know about septic? I, so I, I definitely think that that's a question that will come up in a little while. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hold on. Okay. 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 One more. No, I think the rest can wait, so thank you. I did have one question. I think in Jen, you're right up. You said that um, there was a suggestion. Well, you weren't sure if the board wanted to contact town council about the legality of. We'll, we'll get to that. Okay. Um, Frank. Uh, first of all, congratulations, Paul, on your daughter's graduation. And sons. <laughs> and sons. And sons. Oh, right. There's three of them. <laughs> well, one of them is valid good Victorians. No. No? Wrong again. <laughs> 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 and my daughter was in that group too, Frank. <laughs> Congratulations, Luke. <laughs> and Mariel's. Yeah, I'm just going to say hi. Uh, about what we've seen so far, and I want to say thank you guys have uh, come back and adjusted expectations and plans and um, taken some of the concerns from the neighbors in, in place. Um, thank you. Uh, and uh, that's all for now. Okay. 
Um, next on the agenda, thanks for the reminder, is the consultant review by the beta group. Thanks for your patience. Um, we may have to share maybe, space. Share maybe we um, let him sit down for a second. Sorry, guys. Sorry, so folks. Thank you. I'm going to thank everybody in advance for their flexibility with our accommodations. <laughs> Welcome. For, for the record, my name is Phil Paradis, a professional engineer with Beta Group. Uh, we've been reviewing this project uh, on, on behalf of the, on the board. Uh, we did review the previous submission. Uh, the applicant has made <coughs> a number of changes uh, addressing previous comments. Uh, I listened to the presentation. I didn't hear anything that, that is, uh, is not factual uh, based on um, frontage and all, all the stuff, so I won't go through all that. Uh, the conventional subdivision does meet the minimum requirements for a preliminary subdivision. Uh, as was stated, obviously when you go to the, the definitive, it would be much more intense engineering-wise. A lot of the, you know, the stormwater can probably be addressed in many of the facets, uh, you know, septic and water uh, supply will have to be addressed. Um, the roadway layout is, you know, will have to be uh, confirmed. Um, the, the 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 challenge for the uh, the applicant is the uh, larger quantity than normal of, of wetland impacts. Uh, there are ways of of engineering around that. Um, so. In general, the, the only thing that they did miss was a section of Chamberlain Road prior to this section that they, they say they're gonna improve. The section, I don't know, three or 400 feet of Chamberlain Road up here will also have to be um, expanded to, to meet the minimum just a clarifying it's question. Like, it's 500 feet down here. They said 500 feet. So was that including? We did say, we did say that up to on the central. So the 500 feet is going up Chamberlain. The, that's what I thought. The other part of Chamberlain's not on our plan. It's yeah. outside that. So it would actually be improving what's noted on that plan as the unimproved way and then going up Chamberlain. So that's 500 feet we talked about. How much is on this plan and how much is on existing? Uh, Looks like about 300 right here. Here, and then 200. Uh, that's it, okay. Um, they are asking for the waiver for the buffer, uh, and that's about it. Relative to traffic, they did submit a similar traffic report than they initially submitted. The previous time, we did have a number of comments. They did address them last time to our satisfaction, except for the Travel time uh, comment, which would be the last one, T8, um, in our letter. So, but if they do this subdivision, the way, I mean, the, the open space plan, the way they're showing it, then, uh, and, it, and they can control the, the access, um, which we'll, I think we'll have to discuss whether that's possible or not. Um, for the emergency access road. So explain what you mean by that, please. So if, <coughs> well, obviously, if, if, if the, the, the issue is restricting the travel to only emergencies through this section. Otherwise, you, uh -huh. you, you've created a, a, a cut through. Uh -huh. There are many roads in Puckington that are less than 20 feet wide. So it'll look like a road. It, but they're planning on it being gated. Is that correct? Right. Correct. 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 Right. So, when we did meet with the, uh, the department heads, uh, John indicated that he doesn't like to keep them locked. John during, Westerling. Right. Okay. John Westerling, the DPW director, okay. does not like to keep it locked during the winter because he's got to get through plows. So, I think that's going to have to be worked out. We did work on it. Yeah. We, had, we had previously proposed that it would be gated but have some sort of an automated opening that 
DPW would have access to fire safety, et cetera, so that in the case of you know plowing and such, the drivers wouldn't actually have to get out of the vehicle. They would have access from within. So we could work out the logistic of the gate so that it was not. And is that a viable option? To, to so um, I definitely think that that is in sort of the more detailed um, place when we get there. Um, I don't know, but we're going to have to find out. Okay. Anything else? No. no. no okay. Thank you very much. Um, then we have comments from other town departments, which it was only if they were in the audience and had anything to say. Is there anybody here don't from other town here. departments? Okay, perfect. We can be race right through this agenda, <laughs> making it look easy. I know, I know. I won't say that way. Um, okay. This is the moment on the agenda. I should say uh, the next couple of items. I'm sorry, I didn't sort of run down the agenda. Is it out there for people? Okay, so I won't run through it because we can all read. Um, the next uh, item on the agenda is planning board members and the public uh, are invited to add to the outline. I'm going to do the same thing with the planning board. I'm going to go around um, rather than have us all shout out. Um, and then members of the public, this will be challenging. We're going to have to share that space for people to come forward. I'm, again, I apologize. We're making it work, though. No problem. Um, okay. Just note that it's adding to the outline. It's not discussion. So that is a really excellent point, Jennifer. Thank you. So this is about um, making additions or uh, additions to the outline, not discussion points. Um, Kelly. I'm sorry, I always start with you. Should I start at the other end? Oh, no. Okay. That's good. Okay. Um, I don't have anything to add at this moment. Okay. Frank. I don't have anything to add. I don't have anything. I don't have anything. I'm good. All set. Right on. Ready to move. Do we have a section for impacts to neighbors during the construction period? Is that? Mm -hmm. If not, I'd... I don't know that I saw that exactly. So where would that go? Um, impact to neighbors oh. during construction. We can add a separate item for construction management. Okay, perfect. Anything else, Amy? Um, let's see. Let's see. Oh, impact on schools. Is that in there? Oh, excellent point. Um, can, um, just at least communicating with the schools that we have this proposal <coughs> in front of us with the proposed number of. Um, what, is that good enough if we send them just a piece of communication and invite them to? Yeah, sure. Respond to their way. Yeah. Okay. Um, we did hear um, on the campaign trail that the schools would love to know when developments of any size are going in. Um, so if we can just send them a direct invitation to come. So or just, have they had the invitation? Well, so just on that note, so we've been informed that we do have a liaison from the school committee to the planning board now. <laughs> and I'm going to butcher the guy's name, John Gretz. Graziano. Okay. We'll help you out. And he, they did ask for me to send him information through some kind of outlet, but I don't do that because we have a subscription on our website where if anybody is interested in planning board information, they subscribe and it automatically gets sent to them. So I suggested that they do that. Okay. So they've been told how to get the information. Perfect. <laughs> Whether or not they've done that, I can't be sure, All but... Right. Right. And then the other thing is, we, John and I have been asked to provide the school committee with um, some sort of frequent reports of ongoing projects. Um, so the first one's not going to happen until September, but it Okay, okay, perfect. So increased communication on the projects in front of the board. Perfect. Right. Anything else, Amy? That's it. I don't not have an outline question, but I have a procedural question, so I think it would be okay to ask it now. Sure. Um, the waivers that they're, they've applied for, is that listed anywhere? So under zoning compliance, that we would talk about. No, but I mean, do we have any? Oh, that's when they're. Yeah, they're only yeah. asking for the one waiver. OK. Mm -hmm. Thanks. OK, anybody from the public have any additions they'd like to make to the um, agenda? The outline. outline. You have to come forward, please. <laughs> I, th I think in the past, for just additions to the outline, we didn't ask for their name or anything. But you have to just ask very their informal. Name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Got to be done. I know that you wanted to keep this on a very specific subject. My name is Bob Draper. I'm the president of the Hopkinton Sportsman's Association. 
<coughs> uh, number one, I was wondering if this was the first notification of a hearing that had gone out to an abutter. This was the first one that we had received, and yet I understood and saw online that you had a number of comments from neighbors on Google Docs. So there was a previous a hearing process that they withdrew the application, so there would have been notices that had gone out back in March, April. Um, for the, that hearing process, but they withdrew that application, so that did not proceed. And then the one that I guess you received to be here tonight was the first, this was the notice for this hearing. Okay, fine. I'd, and second, I guess I need to, to um, ask this of you. Um, the supply of the uh, diagrams and the plans ran out out there, yeah. and I wondered if perhaps I could avail myself yeah, so, of those. Um, I don't have any cards with me, but if you I can give them one of my shows. Or if I would say, if you somehow leave me your contact oh, information, oh, I can it email it to, have to you. Be right away. Uh, 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 I would say I can okay, email great. it to Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Yeah, we were limited as to what we can print at the okay. moment with town hall being closed. So. <laughs> I understand you're kind of operating under a handicap there. Well, big, yes, big we time. <laughs> and um, thirdly, I just wanted to make notice that um, that there is a sportsman's club that abuts this property on the one side of it. A uh, nice piece of open property. We do an enormous amount for the town. Uh, if you might have noticed from hot news there, there was a uh, drone picture of the uh, fishing derby that was done for the kids. Just so that uh, when you're considering whatever plans are going to be done, that you do consider that we, we are in a butter. Um, also, when the plan goes forward and it's more, more formally accepted, we will submit in a letter from our attorney describing the club and what it does and um, have that hopefully adopted in, in your final plan. That's all for me. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mary Arnott from 51 Teresa Road. And to add to the outline, I'm not sure if it's in here because I Thank can't you. tell, but I'm curious about the actual development of the property. Is it gonna be a kind of a scorched earth approach where all these trees come down or are they going to preserve the trees, especially in the open space areas? And then on the individual lots themselves, are they going to go and take everything down, or are they going to allow a lot of the trees? And, um, so I'm going to take a leap that that is at the more definitive stage. But I think that it's, uh, it's worth noting a, a preference for uh, more preservation. And I think that the letter and the spirit of the open space bylaw is to preserve um, trees, scenic features, viewscapes. Um, so in keeping with the bylaw, it would not be that. Okay. So there'll be an opportunity to discuss <coughs> that as we get deeper into the outline. Absolutely. I'll add it under construction management. Okay. Under construction management it goes. So okay. you'll see that on your outline when, when as we go time. down it. The next, at the next meeting when we, when we get to that point. You'll be able to <coughs> look at that and bring that forward. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> it's Brendan Tedstone, Pleasant Street. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be off, off base or not. <clears throat> I follow this from the beginning. And obviously today is the beginning. So we're not going to think about the, all the stuff that we've done before. But if the developer <coughs> is willing to put in two cul-de-sacs, with an emergency access only, gated emergency access. The Chamberlain Street residents are happy with it. The Whalen Road residents are happy with it. I don't understand why we're gonna draw this out and make this a big long process if it's gonna appease everybody. I don't understand it. Um, so I'm just here trying to figure out if there's something that we can do where the developer says, yes, We'll put in these two cul-de-sacs, we'll put in a 20-foot access road, gated, state-of-the-art, electronic, laser, retinal scan, <laughs> eye-opening gates <laughs> for snowstorms. We can even radiant heat it to make sure there's no snow there. I don't understand why this is going to drag on and drag on when a little common sense can go a long way. So the if simple it, answer for you is that municipal law is, is, outlines a process. We're not going to be the tortoise, we're not going to be the hare, but we're going to satisfy the process and the law and the open meeting hearing. Nobody is looking to be nonsensical, non-commonsensical, um, but the process exists for the protection of everybody, yep. the developers, the, the, the residents, 
Um, so I, I appreciate that you seem to be speaking for the crowd because nobody's no, no, throwing I'm out anything at you from the back. But um, but so yeah, nobody is looking to be uh, you know slow slow yep. this down. Um, but the process is what it is. We have to go through it. Yeah. So I I think with <coughs> with the two cul-de-sacs and the emergency access where they will connect the water main from Whalen Road through to Chamberlain Street. I think that's going to create a, uh, I think the fire department will be very happy with the, go ahead. I'm just saying, do you, do you have anything to add to the agenda? I do want to hear your points, but this is really about adding to the outline, Brendan. Yeah, I think I'm all set. Okay, sorry. Thank that's you. All right. Thank you. I definitely Thank let you. us know all your input. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Um, and just um, just to, to be clear, I think we all know that that connection, that water connection, is an attractive feature, um, and we're going to keep keep that in mind. Um, the next item on the list is scheduling a site walk. So I don't know how people feel about a site walk if they need to do one. Or um, I I went to the last one. Um, Certainly happy to do another one. I don't know how people feel about the site one. Yeah, it was that. We met at the last one. So uh, I open up to the board um, about interest. I think it was just the three of us that were at the last one, right? Yeah, so most of six. Oh, no, Amy was there. Oh, Amy was there. Okay, so yeah. four. So four of the nine. Yeah, I guess, it's, I guess it makes sense to me to schedule a site walk in that case where the majority of the board hasn't been. Does that, does that sound? Okay, I'm sorry, Ms. That you're not I'm doing sorry. a site We walk? are going okay. to do one because the majority of the board was not at the last one. If that's okay. A site walk. Oh, yes. Muriel, point of order? Yes. <coughs> Maybe we should take a vote on that? You know what? We can, but uh, yeah. I mean, that, that would be probably the. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Make a move. Can I ask why we're going to vote? Because you could schedule it and just not go. Just not go. <laughs> well, I, I agree, but so why why be redundant and, and schedule it and not go if we don't if we all agree it? Because if just one person wants to go, then it's worth it. Yeah, uh, so I was, I'm going to I'm going to go to make through. the last sidewalk. So personally, I would love the opportunity. <coughs> so I'm going to actually remind everybody to direct all conversation through whoever is leading the conversation. Um, okay, so by sh by a nod of friendly faces, we're going to schedule a sidewalk. What, what, <coughs> when? That's up to you guys. When do you want to do Saturday? Well, we should ask when you are available. Saturday saying, morning. Are you saying like this Saturday? <laughs> I'm not saying some, anything because I don't know. Oh, let's, we could do this. So Saturday. this is July 4th weekend. Yeah, this is July 4th weekend. Yeah. Are, you doing a, are you doing a graduation party or something? What <laughs> party? <laughs> Through the chair. We can accost Yeah. For the, I just realized we don't have a meeting the beginning of July, so we have time to yeah. avoid yeah. the July 4th. Yeah. Yeah, we can accommodate whatever you need. Okay. So Saturdays what the pleasure so of the, the people who might want to so go. So your next. upcoming Saturdays are the 1st, the 8th, the 15th, then the 22nd, and then you have a meeting on the 24th. I'm not sure that this project is going to get on that agenda, um, this is the timing, but those are your upcoming July Saturdays. So I, I don't have a preference. Does anybody have a preference? The 8th works for me. Stu a preference the for the 8th? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Huh, I'm sorry. Summer counseling. August. Mm -hmm. I get I get everybody's social calendar in my head here. Wait. Um, so July 8th does, can that work? Nine o'clock. All right. Is it does it make sense to start at Chamberlain? Like, like we did the last time. Yeah. Yeah, we started at Chamberlain. Yeah, I think yeah. that makes sense. That makes sense. There's parking available. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit better. Okay. I'll be discussing on Philly that day. Are you going with the Boy Scouts to Philadelphia? Then we're all good because I'm not going either. What time did we say? I'm sorry. Yeah, 9 a.m. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. <coughs> um, now it's time for detailed discussion. Um, and the, the first item on here is Conservation Commission filing, discussion of Conservation Commission input desired by the Planning Board. Um, so I'm going to open. I'm going to ask Jennifer for her thoughts first. Um, my only thoughts are um, during the since we've already introduced the information from the last time. Um, you asked the applicant to go before the concom informally, which he did. We received a letter 
from Concom, which I apologize did not bring with me tonight. Um, <coughs> but I believe they indicated that it was potentially developable, but they would like to see additional information. I think that's sort of the crux of their letter. Um, and I believe previously the, the, the board that was sitting had asked him to file with Concom, if I remember correctly. But it's a whole new board, whole new filing. Discuss and make your own. Somewhere I read, decision. and I apologize, I don't know where, that we would need an order of conditions to determine the feasibility of the conventional plan somewhere in our documents. Well, from my professional opinion, that <coughs> is probably true. Okay. But you're the board who votes, so you okay. make that decision. <coughs> All right, so that's the piece of uh, discussion, the discussion point in front of us. <coughs> So. Yes. Do does this board want to require an order of conditions from the Conservation Commission for this project to determine the feasibility? Because one of the criteria you have to meet, do you have to find is I don't know if I don't care, is that the parcel could be developed as a conventional subdivision under existing local, state, and federal land use regulations, of which the Wetlands Protection Act and the Concom local bylaw is a land use regulation, and if it's not developable under those land use regulations, you can't meet that finding, make that finding. So, so if I may, uh, as yeah. a former Hong Kong person, uh, they will make their findings and, and then their recommendations. Um, so I don't think, yes, we'll obviously need that before we can make our decision, but to require them to do it, they, they already will do it. Is that, on the, is that on the plan? So the issue is you're asking for an order of conditions on the conventional plan, which is a yield or concept plan only in determining the number of lots allowable on the open space plan. So in order to get that would require fully engineered NOI on a plan that we will never do. And that's the concern from our side. And I can certainly let Scott Goddard speak more to it if, you know more specific but that was the issue is can they make a decision and provide feedback on the concept plan we presented you know with the conditions with the two wetland crossings etc and is that if they render an opinion is that adequate for you to make the decision that those the number of lots as we presented would be acceptable so, so procedurally Chair, sure. um, they will have to meet and their scientists will you not the full end of review the situation and right now as it has been looked at it's been suggested that it's possible but we don't have all the information yet. Don't have all the information yet. So can I just clarify is that was that the prior plan with the five wetland crossings or have has a new letter be it been no, that was the, the previous six. letter. It's the previous letter. Yep. Which the previous letter, the primary issue with that was the number of wetland crossings mm -hmm. that we were proposing uh, with that okay, plan. Okay, so we don't have a we don't have a current letter. We don't. Correct. Okay. So the intent was uh, well, we would think that they would review the plan based on what we've submitted with this application because it does go out to conservation if they need anything else. And then we would propose to have a separate meeting with them, or maybe a joint Induction. meeting, to discuss what they what they would need for the conventional plan, with two the crossings. concept plan, with only two wetland crossings. We've minimized the wetland impacts on these on this particular round. So it is a very different plan than what they saw previously. And historically, cool. yeah, you're we, still up. We have done joint meetings, uh, legacy farms. Um, with a con home, so it's, it's possible to, to It might do help that. to facilitate the discussion to have everyone in one place. Does that sound, does that sound attractive to you? Yes, yes. we would like very that. much like that. like that. And that would answer my concerns from last meeting about... Um, yeah, let's do it. Okay, so I, let's, can I just around the table to... Are we suggesting having a joint meeting with, with conservation? Con con yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, all right. Anybody have any objection to that idea? No. Oh. I do have a question about that idea. <laughs> Please come forward and state your name and address. You don't have to get up for me. Okay. Um, Carol DeBurr, 47 Chamberlain Street. And I would just like to request that if you have a meeting with Concom or when you start to look at the impacts of the project, that you look at the section of Chamberlain Street and include that in the plans to the extent that you have to alter Chamberlain Street. 
The, uh, so what section of Chamberlain Street? They're telling me they don't have to do anything beyond Center Trail, so down to Center Trail. Is that amenable? <laughs> yes, You're we're actually in the process of doing that right okay. now. That land is being surveyed and such so that we can, that will be included in the NOI filing for the open space plan. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so I think that we are violently agreeing that a joint meeting would be great if the CONCOM is... Um, if, if I may? Willing, yes. Just to clarify, we're going to have a joint meeting with conservation to determine the yield plan, the number of lots yes. that are allowed. The feasibility of the conventional plan. Yeah. Thanks for asking that question. Mm -hmm. So, Jen, I'm looking at Jen. Oh, yes, go ahead. Just to say, we have to issue the invitation doesn't mean they. Right. It's up to them whether to come or not. Exactly. To make the same decision. Exactly. I see you. Hold on one second. Are you looking at dates or are you just. I'm looking at the calendar. And you are? I'm a okay. Perplexed. Yes, sir. So, um, uh, I, I think you've got to understand what the Conservation Commission is going to require. The issue is that they, they couldn't give a lot of guidance because they didn't have a, a, a formal notice of intent filed. So, they, they weren't going to give any kind of Feedback. judgments and whatever. In order, for, like like was said earlier, in order for them to do file a notice of intent, you, you'd have to have fully engineered plans, and um, and I, you know, I don't, I don't, that that's a that's a, a huge step, and so so what I'm saying is, somewhere down the process, they they have to decide whether they whether their design is going to be approved and they're going to get order conditions right so that's a, that's a whole different facet from from what, what I can see from the way they laid out the lots if, if they do get an approval from conservation the the conventional plan would yield well I mean they would also have to get make sure that they can get septic systems to, to work on their site so those those two things then I think that their conventional yield would be as they as they indicate. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, so I think that we all understand that there's a certain um, complexity to getting whatever it is you need from CONCOM, but that's between um, you and CONCOM. And if we have a joint meeting, we can at least see it and ask our questions. Mm -hmm. so that, does that still sound like a good yeah, process? Good. Okay. I'm looking your way for the potential. Uh, I know it's an invitation situation. So the problem becomes, which goes to Frank's point at our last meeting, was that we meet the same night as Hong Kong, uh -huh. and um, and it only in uh, in July are we off kilter because the, we skipped a meeting and they meeting on different days. It's just crazy. <coughs> um, our July 24th meeting is is filling up, so um, I'm not sure how the board wants to do this. So, do they have other meetings other than the 24th in July? They do uh, not in July. Um, let me look. To the chair. Oh, I'm in September. Why am I in September? In July, they meet on the 17th and the 31st. They don't meet on the 24th. Best job. If we have a little, if we have enough time and to move things along, if we can have a, a joint session on that date specifically just to address that, For this. Yeah. rather than push everything off mm -hmm. until the August meeting, if we can get that joint meeting. So the, the, so we have to schedule a date and sign time starting tonight. Right. I won't know right. until at the earliest tomorrow if ConCom's even available. Right. Mm -hmm. And maybe not, I mean, until I get a hold of Don and he can get a hold of his members. So, I mean, I guess we schedule the meeting, send the invitation, and see what happens. But I think time-wise, if we can take care of that issue, because it is an important issue to continue mm -hmm. forward at the next meeting, we'll move things along rather than push everything yeah. out. 
Okay, so well, do you want to do that now or? I so mean, let's 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 cross this one off the list. We'll issue, so, pick a date and issue the invitation. So we have on July twenty fourth, we have a seven thirty um, minor site plan revision for the library, and we have a seven forty five site plan review for the Golden Pond expansion, and we just continued that scenic road public hearing to eight fifteen. So. If I might suggest, could you guys attend one of their meetings in July, the 17th and the 30th, and contact them and ask them could the board planning board attend to address this issue? Because we have to continue to a date and time certain here, and I don't know what their That's schedule the challenge. is like. Could we start earlier? Then we That's what I was wondering start. if we could start at 7. Do, do but then seven. you're limited to a half an hour with, with this project. Or six thirty, if we're feeling. Or you could start it for yeah, half an hour, and then they could wait till after your eight fifteen. No, well, that that kind of stinks. I mean, six thirty is an option. Is anybody willing to do that? No, that's not good. They would do that to continue. They would wait. They you would wait. wait. Yes, that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't so, forget, you also have residents in the audience who may not be amenable to waiting. So, thank you for that. I kind of like the uh, six thirty approach. How does anybody feel about six thirty on that night? Yeah, that's fine. I'm totally fine. fine with that. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do our best. All right, so let's do that, and hopefully we're, we'll be able to do it without a break in waiting. So 6.30 on that. Then can I just ask, uh, 6.30 on our next meeting date, which is? July 24th. Thank you. Um, can I just ask procedurally, if it doesn't work, they're not able to do it, what do we do then? Well, someone. Probably me. Yeah, has to be here <laughs> to tell everybody it's been continued to to a different time. A different time. And what I would suggest is at the end when we close the hearing tonight, is we also continue it to a different meeting so that so you, you all don't have to show up at six thirty and wait out around an hour. Is what I'm saying. Do you know what I mean? Because you would have to make the decision to continue it to a different time. Yeah. But if it's already continued to I another see. meeting yes. date yes. tonight. Yes, if it, if it falls through at 630, we would already have the next day. Yes. yes. Oh, experienced in all of this. Um, okay. Should we set that day and time now, since we're talking about it? Again. Okay. So what would be the next opportunity? Um, your next scheduled meeting was August 14th, and there's nothing on the agenda at the moment. So if we had to, if, if CONCOM was not available mm -hmm. uh, on the 24th, mm -hmm. we would continue it tonight to, so we already have a date and time certain if they aren't available, we can put, essentially put two dates and times in front of them, hoping to get this. Is that okay? Is there an option to move forward on the 24th with issues beyond CONCOM? So that we don't, if there is openings on the agenda, so that we don't lose basically a month and a half potentially. Um, so, so I, I am amenable to that because we're we've just agreed to be here at six thirty. So I don't know why we wouldn't do that. Um, or and could still, we, right. but we still have to have that second okay. date that's, for contact. That's fine then. I just does that sound all right? Yes. How does that sound for everybody? Sounds good. Look at us go. Yeah. So seven thirty on August fourteenth. Seven thirty on August fourteenth. <coughs> so in that case, we wouldn't be sitting here at 6.30 with nothing to do anyway, so that... So that we need actual votes to... Okay. So the first vote would be to continue the meeting to 6.30 on July 24th and invite conservation, and then it would be have an alternate date with conservation of August 14th at 7.30. So, so moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thanks, guys. Okay, awesome. Um, do you think we need to? I think we can skip right down to zoning compliance in that case because we're gonna. Yeah. Okay. Um, zoning compliance, the open space uh, bylaw. So, as you've heard several times tonight, it complies um, with the the, op the open space preservation and landscape development bylaw. Um, other than the request for the one waiver to have a reduced buffer um, on the one, can you just point out where the reduced buffer location yes. is? Thank you. On the one side. The buffer? Yeah. Right here, along this. Along so on the, that right side, here. they're asking for 50 foot, right, instead of 100? I think it's less than that. Oh, okay. I think 
zero. Oh, okay, it's a zero buffer. Okay. We haven't included that because this was going to be open space. Okay. So it's just the one here, and there's no. There's okay, so it's a zero buffer. Zero buffer here. So can I ask for the reason for that? Or? Uh, why? Why uh, are you looking for that? It just we, it just facilitated the road design and the lot design, and we felt because it was up against town land, there were no abutter privacy issues that we would request that. Correct. For clarification. Go ahead, Frank. Uh, whoever can answer this, my my help answer Kelly's question, and I have the same question: is the old cart path road that's mm -hmm. there is you refer to that as town property right yes and, and then, then on, on the other side on the other side is town property correct yes. so it's a road and land beyond it correct to and then and, and yes on that side of it is and then right. we have open space on either side of that that's been carved out thank you all right anybody on the board have any questions on that waiver request Thanks. So if, if they had to have the buffer in there, it would it decrease the lot size for number 32? Is that? They'd probably lose a couple lots. We lose one lot, I believe, it if lose we one were lot. to do that. We, okay. can, we can reconfigure the other lots, but we lose one. I believe it was one lot. Number 32, is it, in the corner? I'm sorry. If you, if no, sorry. You, you can look at the small plan, but it's okay. Yes, uh, um, there was the potential if we had to put in the 100 foot buffer, we could make these smaller and still comply, but we would have to lose one lot. So this would all be reconfigured. Okay, so, so who knows? Yeah. Yeah. So it could be any one of these lots, but this okay. whole section would look a little bit different. And we'd be down one lot. So, does anybody have any questions, concerns, comments on the waiver requirement? I think because across the street, because yeah. across the street is public land, and it's not going to be developed, that this waiver request doesn't necessarily impact anybody in a negative way, unless I'm understanding it wrong. I think it seems straight up. It would be different if there were people across the street and had a normal road, but I think in this case it would be. <coughs> Anybody up? Yep. I'm sorry. I didn't So, do we vote on this now, or you can, or you can wait till the end and vote on oh. it when you vote on the oh, oh come for mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> for clarity, Muriel. Yeah. Um, we're voting on what you're asking. This is the, yeah. the requested yeah. waiver. We're not voting, by the way. Yeah. I was asking about whether we should vote now. Um, the requested waiver uh, about the uh, hundred foot oh. buffer that they're hoping not to have to comply mm -hmm. with okay. and the, in this section here. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mary. Mary are not 51 Teresa Road. Um, I don't have the map, so I couldn't see, but you say it butts town property. I can't speak for the town, so I don't know what that property is, but since there's no one representing any plans that there could be in the future to develop on that land by the town, municipal building, park it for the kids, I don't know what. Would that become an issue because the waiver was granted? Um, is that Barry Acres all the way up to there? No. Um, I have to, I, oh, I'm sorry. That's no, that's okay. okay. It's, not, it's not Barry Acres. It's, it's, not. Town of, it's just Town of Bockington, and it's all wet. It's all wet. It's all wet. I think yeah. it's a, just open space. And yes. in order to take it out of open space, it would have to be an act of the legislature. <laughs> Okay, so seriously, that's not going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, it could potentially happen. Um, okay, anybody else have any questions or comments on the requested waiver of the buffer from the buffer requirement? Just a procedural yeah. point. Um, I, I would think that why not just vote for it now so, so we don't have the same discussion down the road? Yeah, yeah I don't have any vote. objection to that either. Um, so uh, is everybody... Make a motion. Who would like to make a motion? Make a motion that we uh, um, do not require the 100 foot buffer zone I'll second. for that area. All right, so it's been moved and seconded. Is there any other discussion? 
Uh, so I will just say, it's hard to get your thoughts in when you're the chair. Um, I'm not in favor of that. I'm not too worried about losing one lot. I'd rather preserve the buffer as a, as a procedural, uh, you know, uh, setting a uh, precedent. Um, so all those in favor, say aye. 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 Oh, we might have. How about raise your hands? Call for discussion before the vote. Yeah. I'm sorry. I did call for discussion. She did. She did. Okay. I'm sorry. Anything else? I'm sorry. Okay. Um, why don't you raise your hand because I heard uh, if you're in favor, say aye and raise your hands so you're seen. Aye. And opposed? Aye. I don't know. Okay. It's so it it passes. So you, you're you're away from the buffer. <coughs> All right. Is there anything else on the zoning compliance? Nope. All right. Is that compliance? Zoning anything discussion. Else? Okay. Now's the time we talk about zoning. Um, so, through the chair, what we've heard uh, today, just to kind of, this is day one of the process, uh, despite what Mr. Testo was concerned about, to rag it out, but we've heard that ANR, which is an approval not required, would be six homes on either side of this, uh, possibly. Um, we've seen uh, a plan saying we could pos they could possibly build uh, 32 homes with the road if it was a standard plan. Um, and we don't have all the information on that yet, which is why we'll be meeting with the uh, Conservation Commission. Uh, then there we have the open space plan, which includes the trails and the improvements that we had discussed previously, but they're presenting it uh, now as a concept. And um, it's showing the 20-foot wide access road. Um, I think, uh, thinking about zoning, I, I, I'm, I'm torn because we know we can't really do dead ends off of dead ends, um, and we know that we uh, having a through road maybe won't be the best solution either, uh, maybe for wetland reasons, or uh, we don't have that information yet. But I'm thinking if we're doing an access road and calling it just an access road, not a through road, it, it's kind of really just making two cul-de-sacs with the net, with the emergency access, and it's not one thing, it's not another thing, and uh, I think that our bylaws either say that it should be a road or it should be uh, just the cul-de-sacs extended as far as they can, which is not 32 homes, but 10 homes on each side or something like that. So <coughs> I don't want to bend what's there. This is maybe a unique situation, but I want to understand what's there, what our options are. And the biggest question for right now that we're facing, no matter what we can, they can build or not concerning the wetlands, is what are we looking at? How is it zoned? How does our bylaws cover what can be done, and uh, the emergency access road, I think, you know, is, is a unique situation that um, I would like to have more of a legal opinion on from our town council. Okay, so you so moved us neatly, which I think is wonderful, down on the... Uh, so I have a proced the, procedural suggestion. Hold on one second, Cliff, thanks. No, uh, Cliff. Hold on, yes, hold on one second. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, wow, I apologize. Um, we're, I'm just going to make the point that we are at road and lot layout and design, we might as well, yes. So to that point, procedurally, I would like to suggest that we leave 8B open because to Frank's point, 8C should be addressed before it so we don't cross off A, B, and we can go back to zoning depending on what is discussed in 8C. Totally fine with me. Thank so you. we're gonna, we're gonna, is that what you were, where you were going is you wanted to hold on to B? We're gonna have to talk about it at some point, but we need more information. Right, <coughs> so we just talked about needing the CONCOM in that, in that loop, so, okay. I think that that makes a great deal of sense. Are you talking about um, road and lot layout design, possible legal opinion RE design though? The whole part and parcel, yeah. Okay. So shall we talk about A, that particular point? Okay. Thank you, David. Right. Here we go. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, thank you. Joseph Antonellis, for the record. Uh, my office in, in both Milford and Framingham. Thank you okay. for the opportunity. Uh, I understand the, uh, the difficulty of that point for your, your board and your, your regulations are fascinating to read in that regard. 
and um, I can tell you what I think, and that doesn't make any difference. Um, you need to get an opinion from your council. So as we head to the next meeting, uh, because I believe this is a seminal point in this, in this whole process, that to the extent that that opinion could be given to you prior to the next meeting, I think it'll save us all a lot of time because my, my, my client obviously has other options. I believe that he's picked the option that he believes is best for this community. And I strongly believe that. I do a lot of this kind of work. I think the plan has been carefully detailed in that regard to preserve open space. But I also think that there is some flexibility within your bylaw. I believe that the criteria relative to dead end roads and the number of houses on dead end roads are intensity regulations. And I believe that your bylaw, as it's drafted, has a separate section on intensity regulations and specifically allows this planning board to waive those. And the reason I believe that the length of the road and the number of houses are intensity regulations is because part of the definition of intensity has to do with numeric value and quantity. And so you've, again, you've ca characterized your frontage, area, side setbacks, minimum yard, rear yards, etc. All of those are intensity regulations. And then within the same section of your bylaw, you set forth A, B, and C, which deal with common driveways, dead end streets, and the number of houses, and also lot frontage. So even though lot frontage is recited in one spot in your bylaw, you then pick it up again. So I believe there is room within that bylaw for a waiver and to the extent that town council makes a determination that's in accord with my opinion, then we would respectfully request the right to reserve our right to file for a waiver on that regard. But notwithstanding my particular view of it, and again, you, you have to follow your town council's view, to the extent that that opinion or view could be given earlier in this process, I think it would be very beneficial to all of us and to the neighbors from a timing standpoint so that when we are then discussing, we know where we're going to be. Sure. Thank you. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you. That, for the chair. Yes. That's why we put it here so we can <laughs> do it and make the time we want. Um, okay. So um, that was a, a, a long way around saying there are intensity regulations in the zoning bylaws outside of the, the overlay, the, the, um, this specific no, within. no within, within it. Within. Specifically within it. Okay, That's thank the point. you. That was my. Okay, thank you. Specifically within this bylaw. Yep. All right. Any so, uh, comments or questions? So I just think the next steps for us are to uh, contact our town council. It's to, it's to vote to um, ask the the attorney okay. for his his opinion on this this okay. position. Um, should we also include as part of that asking him like what precedent this would set if we did allow the two cul-de-sacs with the emergency? I like will this, imp will this impact that. other future developments that people want to do? Um, okay. Just part as part of his opinion. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is somebody willing to make that motion? I make a motion. Say the whole thing. Okay. I make a motion to request the advice from town council regarding if this meet the two cul-de-sacs meets the bylaw. Okay, and include his opinion, opinion on, on um, future listing. Uh, the president, Pre president would set. set if we okay. is there a second? In, oh. like a friendly amendment in all the scenarios that we're reviewing on this, though. I mean, there's um, when we're considering <coughs> how many lots we can they could do with the standard plan. Um, is are we comparing apples to apples or are we comparing apples to oranges? Because if we're comparing something that can't be done, then it's, 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 it's a false equivalency. So uh, I would just like to have more of a legal standing on what we're actually looking at. So um, um, my amendment is that we get to review all the scenarios that we're uh, being asked to consider. Wait, uh, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Jennifer. You're only asked to be consider. You're only being asked to consider the open space concept plan. The conventional plan is strictly to determine how many lots. lots. So right. but there would be no need for him to review that. But what I mean is, that the conventional plan is based on <coughs> what they see there, what they think they can do. But we don't know if. The crosses would he could even be approved. That's a whole separate issue. That's not what you're asking. 
your from my understanding of what the board has already asked is is the <coughs> proposal in the open space plan with two cul-de-sacs with the emergency access road allowed under the bylaw either through a waiver or by right or and is that an allowable plan that the board can review that's what i'm understanding the board wants to review yes wants to review. through the yeah. chair to help out maybe what frank is saying yes um i think we'll get the answer to that question from the concom and we'll get the answer to the legality of the the, the road design from town council that's my take on it we'll get from two different sources we'll get both answers to both of those questions so um i see you i'm sorry um so just because we're procedurally in the middle of a vote and frank suggested an amendment is there a second to that okay so we're talking about the the um what amy moved for town council for um one plan um the, the emergency access road connecting the two cul-de-sacs. Anybody else on the board have any other comments? Was it, or was it seconded? I don't think so. I'll second it. Okay, thank you. Um, and I saw a lot of hands in the back. Do we still have questions? Yeah. Okay. So, Pat and Bush, uh, 39 Chamberlain, are you saying that you're questioning the waiver ability? The, the ability of the board to actually issue a waiver such that a cut through can be, uh, 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 an emergency access can be put at the, in between two cul de sacs, is that what? We're, just to be clear, and people, people straighten me out if I'm wrong, we are asking town council for his opinion on whether this plan with an emergency access road meets the bylaw. The attorney at the, for the uh, applicant um, has brought up the issue that he believes that it, that situation, no matter how it's decided, could be waived. There, there could be a waiver mm -hmm. applied for. So there's there are, that certainly a waiver uh, scenario has been floated. What we are asking the town council for is his opinion on whether this design meets the bylaw. Right. And if it's not on the record, since this is a new process, yep. I'd like to to state for the record that. The Chamberlain Whalen Neighborhood Association emphatically endorses Mr. Mastroianni's plan, the open uh, open space uh, concept. Um, we expect the board to take that into strong consideration and uh, explore all options to employ a waiver such that that plan can go. Okay, thank you very much for that. Let me. Uh, we are all here and we're all listening, and it's in the record. Um, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to get your association to sign off on that quick statement and get it into the record in writing. Yes. Don Cave, fourteen Whalen Road. I just want to qualify, Mr. Function. You said okay. Um, right now, I think the proposal is twenty feet. Um, I know when we were here last time, I know it's a new board, I know there's a discussion um, about a 12 foot wide uh, restricted access road, uh, route, uh, road. Uh, and well, I certainly, we certainly have to pull the point, we will do that and get you a, a, a formal response from everybody, but I think we uh, are certainly looking and would appreciate the board's consideration for a restricted, not only a, an emergency access road, but a restricted access road, because the concern I've expressed previously is yep. that um, a 20 foot wide uh, road could easily be transformed from an emergency access road to a full fledged cut through down the road. So that's why I think we had made some progress toward a restricted road, so um, a restricted width road. So I would ask that the, the board keep that um, in mind as well. And secondly, you're getting an opinion from town council. Can that be published or made public so we could get access to it before the next meeting so we can have an opportunity to review it? And if we have any comments in response to it, we could be a little bit better prepared to okay. come and uh, so, respond to it. Uh, yeah, thank you. I will invite the, the board to, to weigh in if they have a difference of opinion in this answer. Um, as soon as we get the, uh, the opinion, I, it, it will be made public. Um, I'll have to check with counsel um, whether or not it's considered attorney-client privilege until it's, uh, it's presented at an open meeting. Okay. Just so, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Yep, just thank you. Give us an opportunity to. to um, see it. And the other, the other point you bring up is a, is a really excellent point. So, um, if your association, it's very powerful to have 
all those neighbors and all those signatures. If your association has a position, um, definitely get it documented in writing and have everybody sign that again and get it to us. That's very powerful. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? Just for clarity yes. to the board. So I think the comments they made will be addressed whether we need to have a waiver or not. I think they're not germane to this particular vote because we're going to go with the it, it, current open space design of 20 feet is what we're going to ask the, the Absolutely. Attorney. Okay, thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. That's my understanding as well. All right, is, uh, is there any more discussion on that, the request to town council? Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, all right. Thank you. Yes, I would just say that. Okay, so the hour being 9.45, um, I think uh, we have a, a reasonable point to stop and we have reasonable going at, uh, a go forward position. Um, if it's possible that we make the attorney's um, decision available, that is that is, is the board in agreement that we want it made public as soon as we get it, if that's possible? Yes. I see one person nodding. Yes. Yeah. I think so Brand long as it's not attorney privilege. Attorney no, exactly. Privilege. It, 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 depending on so. what town council says, if he says we can make it public before the meeting, is everybody comfortable with that? Okay. Anybody violently opposed? Yes. Oh, just one question. Uh, of course. Of the street, uh, how will that notification be made? What notification is that, please? The, the, notification, the uh, notification of the uh, town council. Yeah. So the it will be a, part it, of the packet. It'll be part of the packet part if it's packet. public. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Comment? Yes. Um, I'm glad to see the developer and the neighbors working together and finding solutions. Uh, that's what we're all here for. Um, but you know, we have a responsibility to do the right thing for the entire <coughs> town. And I don't want to break something. I don't want to fix something here that's going to break something someplace else. So that, that's why my question came up. I want to be able to make sure we're doing the right thing. Perfect. OK. Thank you all. Thank you. And we will see you July 24th. 6.30 with salads and pizza. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. Really it, it. it was a joke. It was a joke. Well, it's under 50 bucks. It's under 50 bucks. We're good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just me. Back to you. Because we only voted on the same. Even move to close. One I. Right. Yeah. Well, I think they said it with an alternative. If everybody could kind of, we have like 10 minutes to do a little bit more business. We'll be out of here at 10, so, and we have some business to do. So. Thank you so much. That's less than 30 seconds. The next item on the agenda are the appointments of planning board representatives to the design review board, open space, uh, community preservation, and the center school reuse advisory team. The only one that's currently occupied is open space, and that's me. No, I, no, David's on design uh, David's review. David's on design review, okay. So the two, uh, I know as far as I'm concerned, if somebody is interested, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't listening, I'm, I'm confessing. So two <laughs> positions are up. Uh, no, uh, no, no, there's four positions. I don't mean to interrupt, I'm sorry. Okay, so the positions that there are representatives are design review, open space, community preservation, and the center school reuse advisory. At the present time, David is the representative on design review board, and I'm the representative for Open Space Preservation Commission. And how about CPC? So CPC is open and center school reuse has never been is new. And that's an advisory. That's like a liaison advisory. Non-voting. Non-voting. Non right. yeah. hey, can, um, can, I'm sorry, can I ask a question about that? Uh, do you have any ideas? Obviously, that's not a long-term um, committee. Do you have any idea? It'll be the life of the project, so be careful what you say about the, uh, not being a long-term <laughs> commitment. <laughs> I just was curious uh, if, if anybody knew the length well, of they're, that. They're supposed to be out of there September 2018, so I think, you okay. know, maybe sometime early 2019, maybe, I would imagine. Yeah, but it might continue But it might through, continue through. If there was a new project, it might continue through the new project. But these are one-year terms. 
all of the rest. No, that'll Other be than that. That, that one, one was out, was out, out of the way. Well, but you yes. could always but change. But if you decide that it's getting too much or whatever, yeah. Yeah, people we can, can change. Or if, you're, if your term is up and gotcha. you're, you're not. So running. as an example for open space, it was a five-year term, and I'm not, I'm four years into it. But if it's determined that other people are interested, et cetera, I would you know, step aside for that. So why don't we take in kind of reverse order? Um, so why don't we take the center school? I'd be interested in doing that. Um, I was a big supporter of Ken when we put that letter together. Uh, we've talked about it um, in the charter hearing meeting here. And um, I'm glad Ken's on the committee. And um, I'd like to. Uh, be able to work with him on that because we had a pretty thorough vision spelled out of what possibilities there were and, and uh, up till this point there's been no response or action except for creating this committee so um, I'd like to you know, continue that work if, if that's okay with the board. Okay. Unless I'm someone else would really like to do it more than me, I don't know. I think we're, since we have no other can't we will put that and then we'll vote at the end for the everybody all as one package <coughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry is it clear that no it, did, uh, is there any other interest is anybody else interested Are you interested? The, the, right. the only thing else I would like to know I mean because I'm already tied up with my couple other yeah <laughs> committees that I'm on um, but do, do we know the frequency that they meet uh, they haven't even had. They haven't even started. They haven't even had. Okay, yeah, they just sent out their first doodle today. So. <laughs> I, I have. I, I have a lot of interest in that in that particular committee, but uh, I'm a little. Um, I, I'm a little stretched right now. So thank would, you for the I would be happy to to, yeah. to allow. Oh, Frank, perfect. <laughs> to take that. <laughs> I, mean, I was just going to add. I'm the chair of the historic district commission, so I'll get to review this project under that authority. So I don't feel like I would need to be on the. I also think that that committee. presents a, a complicated, even though you wouldn't be voting, I think that presents a complication sometimes. And the historic district has a representative on the committee anyway, okay. so. Uh, okay. Okay, CPC. <laughs> I would be super interested in okay. that. Okay. Nobody else is interested. Second, Muriel. Any other volunteers? Okay, we'll put it in the. In the hopper. In the hopper. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't we move design review? Do you. I think my stay. term's up, right? I think it's just a one-year term, but, right, but if nobody, if somebody else is interested in it, uh, I mean, we could discuss it, how passionate they are. If not, I'll take it. So I don't know if anybody has an interest in it. meets one, once a month. He's it's being not modest. a huge. He did indicate he wanted to stay on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And open space, I'm happy to stay, but if someone has an interest in it, I'm happy to step aside. We all looked at it. So why don't we make a motion for the appointment as uh, um, Frank the for Frank, Center School, Frank for Muriel Center School, for Muriel CPC. for yeah, and we'll John for Open Space, space and David for Design day. Review. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm saying. No. Uh, I think I'm the liaison to the CONCOM. Con we don't have an official liaison. So, <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> 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 you sit up there, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear we've, we've voted on it before, like a uh, couple <laughs> years ago. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, don't, we don't know what was going on back then in those days. <laughs> now, there is nothing preventing anybody from attending Absolutely. and right. attending right. multiple meetings. Right. So. We're just, we're acting as liaisons and, and not, we can't vote on anything. We right, can't right, do right. anything. So. No, I, I go to like lunch with a couple of guys. And, sure. And if, if our meeting ends early and they're still going when we're at town hall, then go in there. But it's a. Uh, Few and far between. That would be 2020. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, if I may have to add to that, um, I want to thank you, John, for opening up the venue as as transparency and and putting it forth that we're being very clear about our intent to the town of Hopkinton and what what this board does. 
and that we, we're not trying to circumvent the bylaws or anything else that we have stated forward. And this is clearly on the line of open transparency. So we, I, I thank you, and I think that the, the whole town thanks you for your intent and for your established um, venue of how we want to go about it. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I want to thank Muriel for stepping up and doing a great job. She looked like a yes. professional. Yeah, looked, First looked time. like I knew what yes. I was doing, yeah. huh? <laughs> um, I just wanted to add, too, you said very eloquently, Cliff, I appreciate that you weighing in on that, too. Um, it's also, it is also what the, the voters and the, um, the audience yep. deserves. Um, so it's, it's a win-win all the way around, and it, it will necessitate some reminders, and it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be accessible to people, right? But not enter into engagement and discussion about anything that's in front of the board um, as, as sort of a back and forth and work in, work in the project. So just to add on to that. Well, that's what, in our ethical, I'm, I'm sorry. That, that would be in our ethical aspect anyway. It's municipal law, right. absolutely. Yeah. It's covered right. by open meeting law. It's just, a, it's just a reinforcement that we're gonna be disciplined about that. Right. Yeah. But it, but it, to, to that point being clear, that we all take an ethical oath at yes. the beginning. So yes. we, it doesn't circumvent any of no. it. No. Right. So through the chair, just some clarification. Uh, <laughs> no official liaison to the uh, ComCom. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, that's very clear, Frank. I will it's confirm that, that's but <laughs> I'm understanding there is no official conservation. So it's not something we do. It's something town, like Norman or something. Right. Okay. So just uh, one follow-up to the previous subject, the open meeting rules. I think it would be a good idea if we just, the beginning of the meeting, John, if you just said, as a reminder, every yep. meeting, just a quick well, little blurb. That's blur why I did it here, even though we covered yeah, the other that. one. Yeah, I love that. It's kind of be like our Pledge of Allegiance. Because I know some people have a hard time and think it's like, but we want to, you're stopping the flow, but to me it's increasing the flow because it's going to all of us. Right. So we're all acting on the same page. So since we have three minutes and 15 seconds, uh, appointments to the design review board to be Yeah, so um, their term oh. expires at the end of July, and um, <clears throat> since we don't, we only meet once in July, I figured I would get them on now. Um, they've all indicated an interest in being reappointed. I've listed them in my memo, who they are and what their um, uh, position is representing. Um, so we have David, who is the planning board representative. We have Sloan Stoddard, who is a person qualified by training and experience in the fine arts and landscape design. Jeff Doherty, who is the person doing business in town. Uh, Jeanette Thompson, who is a person who is qualified by training or experience in art or design profession. Uh, Rhea McNamara, who is a member of the Historic District Commission or a designee of the planning board. I believe she's a designee of the planning board. And then we have two alternate members, Amy Ritterbush and Sean McGinnis. But Amy is also a member of the Historic District Commission. Yep. Rhea is not. Rhea? No. I move the slate. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? So carry. Um, minutes? Um, well, we have, one, we have the lot form oh, K, form. Um, the form K lot release. Um, right. So those of you who are new to the board, um, this form is done after a subdivision has been bonded and the developer wants to sell the lot. So this is for Legacy Farms North. Um, Roy McDowell came in at our last meeting and did an a &R plan. That road was bonded last year, so the bond is all set. So this is just a formality so we can sell that lot to Pulte. Yeah. So I just need a vote to authorize the release of the lot and then I need um, a majority of the board to sign the form. I make a, I make a motion to release the lot. Second. Second. So we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. And then before Just so everybody knows, who hasn't been on for legacy, it's not even though Pulte has there's an agreement for Pulte to handle the rest of the lots. I think except for decision hasn't been made for the seniors yet. Right? Correct. It's it's broken up into lots, and basically, as they get commitments for X number of houses of the lot, then the next one is released. So it's not all one lot. So it's almost like parcel by parcel by parcel. How many, yeah. how many lots all together? Um, I don't. I think it's like five, but I'm not yeah. 100 yeah. positive. So just that's the reason for it. It's not all transferred at the same time. It's basically transferred to uh, Pulte when they're ready to start developing. 
And then before you do minutes, I just have a, a quick announcement. So um, <coughs> as you know, Town Hall is out of commission and has been for a while. We've been operating out of the fire station. Um, as of Monday, July 3rd, all of Town Hall offices will be moved to 80 South Street. Um, I am currently already there, but it is not open to the public. Um, so as till the end of this week, public access is still at the fire station and they can reach me if needed. Um, all town hall offices that were originally in town hall will be closed to the public on Friday for the mass move. So if you need anything, you can't get it Friday. <laughs> Not Friday. <laughs> but as of Monday, come visit us at 80 South Street. And Jennifer just wants to remind everybody that it is adjacent to the Dunkin' Donuts. It is adjacent. That many people have to pass by to get to see her. That's In case. Ice tea. Black. <laughs> <laughs> that is fair to put out there, just in case. Just, just kidding. Um, approval of the minutes. I move that we approve the minutes from May 22nd and June 12th, 2017. No, I don't. Some of them. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Some, some reason. <laughs> 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 All right, where are we now? Excuse me. Both sets. Any comments to the minutes? Did you just make an, agen uh, an amendment to something? No, they're just no, reviewing just the minutes to see if they're okay to be approved. Okay. I, I had so I'm sorry I think it's the May 22nd meeting that I had two comments um, and I came prepared Kobe page three um, line nine is there is there is a little confusing I'm not sure what is confusing I, it's, I don't have it in front of me I'm sorry oh, see I'm stupid <laughs> Line nine, is that where it said? Well, I just, the other so May 22nd, page 3, you said? Yep, line yep. 9. Which line 9? Is that the one that says it starts with construction and beyond period? Um, oh, so. And to make, so it was primarily, I'm sorry, it's page 3. Yeah, was primarily extended to keep the public away from the lead contaminated soil and to make it is not throughout the area. Make sure it is not distributed throughout the area? Uh, we'll okay. put the sure in. Sorry. <laughs> sure, we'll put sure in. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, um, on, on page 10, I think the new members of the board abstained rather than vote no, or, or I'm not sure. I, I, know, I, abstained. I abstained from the first uh, vote of minutes or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so and just the new members abstain. And that was it. Are these the minutes? Oh, no, the minutes down here. They abstain. So, so we're members. voting on the minutes Instead of no as extension. Amended. 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 Kramer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Oh, they abstain. Oh, they abstain. Oh, all the no's were abstain. Yeah. Abstain. So carried. Was that a unanimous? Yeah, unanimous, yes. yes. Yeah. Mariel, you only made one adjustment on that or two? I made two. Okay. Two. Who seconded it? I know. You were. I'll second. Oh, I think you seconded it. Oh, I might have. I'm sorry. Okay. And was that for both the sets of minutes? Yes. Yeah, yes. he moved both sets. So one was a minute. No changes on June 12th. Yeah, any other uh, items, reports, et cetera? Should we make a motion to adjourn? So we'll be sure. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nice job, thank you, guys. Thank have a happy 4th of July. Oh, that's right. Nice job. Oh, thank you. <laughs>